work for me. Can't, I can't do uh, the TikTok trending songs I anymore. Know. I can't listen to them ever again. It's, <laughs> they it's, all get stuck in my head. It's bad. It's so bad. It's bad. It's just... Uh, that actually... That's actually one of the topics. One of the topics is... Uh, first rain sip. That's the first rain sip I've had in quite a bit, quite a bit of time. I, I got off caffeine for a little while. Had to reset the adrenals. Crack it. Ah, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Love that for us. I love that for us. Uh, I got off of all caffeine. Try to reset the adrenals. Chill out a little bit. And yeah, I mean, it was good for a little while. I went two years without caffeine for a little while. So no coffee. Nothing. Nothing. I didn't. I didn't. I, nothing. Uh, that was an interesting, Wow. yeah, I, I felt good. I'll tell you the hardest part. The hardest part at first was training. The hardest part was like getting into the mood to just get in there, annihilate shit, go crazy. But I found that the pump products helped me. Like I, especially if they had a little niacin in it, I, I got right. that flush. I felt a little bit of the tingles, even though it was a placebo almost. And then I felt like, okay, we're good because of years of taking pre-workout. You sit there and you go, Where's that feeling of just wanting to just kill everything? Not like crackhead feeling, you know. <laughs> the crack, yo, the crackhead feeling. It, it's so it's always been hit or miss for me. So when I was going nuts at Montaneri Bros, getting ready for the shows, I would do three to four scoops. Swear, swear, I'm I'm shocked that I never dropped from a heart attack when I was doing it. Uh -huh. Three to four scoops of Mister Hyde. Oh the, my God, I remember that. The original yes. shit. Yes. So like that yes. plus Jack, like this was all yes. the crazy time. Oh my God, I remember that. That one, that was crazy. I remember the first yeah. time I ever took the, the Hyde one. I did an hour of cardio, hopped for, at Export Fitness, hopped in the car, did a full leg workout at Bev's, then went back to Export Fitness, did another hour of cardio, and then did a back workout like later that day. Oh. It was like a full day of just working out, and I was like a complete crackhead. Like, just yeah. like, oh, yeah, okay, where do I go? What do I do? And everyone's like, I gotta like, get more in. I gotta, get, I gotta do more. You're right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, I was a crack. It was crazy. But I can't not do – my whole thing is I, I just can't not have coffee. And at this point, it's not even because of the caffeine. It's just because I like the taste of it. Y'all so hear I how can't. she's hitting that that coffee, right, because she's back on Long Island. Miss <laughs> Leave Us, hit L.A., right? She's 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 a new woman. She's, she's an L.A. – what do they call it? An expat, even though it's still in the United States. I mean, I'm an expat of New York, and I'm just living in L.A., but she still hits that coffee – Coffee. I'll never get rid of my Long Island Ooh, accent. She hits that hard too. I won't. I just can't. I just, it'll never, you can take the girl out of Long Island, but you can't take the Long Island out of a girl. Facts. That's facts. all it is. It's the roots. It's, 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 it's embedded too deep in you. You're just like, I have a buddy, uh, Brandon. Brandon, if you're listening to this, I love you, bro. He is, uh, he's been on the show before. He uh, was a, uh, an army uh, sergeant and he lives out in Florida. But the more that he hung out in the South, the more he got a Southern accent. But every now and then that Long Island accent comes out where yeah. he starts really hitting it hard. And I said, yo, man, you fake Southern motherfucker. <laughs> just, you're just you're just masking what you actually are. Stop it. Like he'll he'll really talk like hickish. He'll have that real deep South accent, and then all of a sudden he'll start getting irritated, and you'll hear that New York come out. I go, see, I knew it's still it's fucking still in there. It's, it's still, still there. in there. It's funny. So, like, when I'm teaching my class at F45, it comes out all the time. Like, if I'm like, all right, time to hydrate. Let's get some water. And people are like, water. People are like, get what? And I'm like, all right, get your water. And then people are like, Ugh. and I'm like, all right, guys, we're, we're four years deep into this. Uh, we all know that the accent is still there. Yeah. Or like if I say like on or off and people are like, what? You want us to do it? I'm like, 50 seconds off. And they're like, oh, are you yeah. sure? I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. That, I'll just, like, I'll just hold the up, dog. I'll just hold up cue cards. If it really bothers you that much, I'll hold up cue cards. Is exactly what I want you guys to do. Just read. And if you forgot your glasses, you're shit out of luck. It is what it is. It's also like a one of a kind accent, I kind of feel like. Because when I'm like out and about, people will always be like, are you from from Long Island? And I'm like, I am. You yeah. know, like people like I was really funny. I was just in Portugal. Right. So I am on a boat tour in the middle of Portugal. Right. By myself. I went on a solo birthday trip. And there's these four women right in front of me. And I'm listening to them talk. And I'm like, oh, they have to be from like Syosset. <laughs> I was like, Oyster Bay. They have to. Like, there's just no way. I'm like listening to their accent, right? So I'm sitting on this boat, minding my business. I have this one woman come up to me and she goes, 
I see what they fucking did to you. And I was like, because I got iced out on this boat by, um, I was minding my own business sitting in the corner or whatever. And there was this like group of elderly French people. Okay. Listen, the French people are a little rude sometimes in Europe. They are a little rude. A little bit. I'm going to be honest. A little bit. You know, I'm transparent. I'm going to be real honest real quick. The French people fucking love me. The French people fucked me. They love me. But it's also because I took French, which I was told was useless in middle school, high school, and college. I took it. I took French. Everyone was like laughing at me. They're like, yo. It's either it's either you you got to do Spanish or like and that's it or Italian and that's <laughs> it and I'm like no no, no I want to try I want to try French and then everybody that took Italian and fucking Spanish when we were studying abroad they were useless in France yeah but the kid the kid got us to the Latin Quarter right and we were taking absinthe shots and having a ball so because of Nick's French and his background there. Y'all are welcome. We had a great time. Well, with that, like, because it, it's also like an ignorance thing too, right? Like when you when you travel and like you don't know other people's uh, like culture or you don't know their their language, like they view Americans as like we're rude and like we're just uneducated and we only care just, about ourselves, right? And then we only care about ourselves. So when French people like they love that though, like if they, if they see that like you'll speak French and like try, like then they'll have a totally different experience yes. with you. So like when I was on this boat, I'm like in this little corner and they get all these people like covering in, like they're all sitting around. And like now I'm like iced into the corner. So I have like these French people talking to me in French and they're like, move. And I'm like this. I'm like, oh, oh okay. damn. Now I'm, I'm going to respect my elders. So everyone on the boat around me, like those four women from Long Island, they were looking at me like, oh, we're, we're going to kill these people for her. Right. And then the guy driving the boat, he was like, all right, let me move you. So he moves me to the front of the bow. So th- throughout the whole boat tour, one of the women from Long Island, she comes over. She goes, I saw what they fucking did to you. She's like, I would never. I instantly put my shit down. She's like, you're better than me. I would have definitely opened up my big old mouth. You know that. And I was like, are you from Are you from Long Island? And she was like, yeah, I heard you were from New York. And I was like, yeah. And she, I was like, I'm from West Islip. And she goes, I'm from Smithtown. I'm like, what are the odds? I'm all the way in freaking Portugal, all the way down the Algarve coast. And I'm like on a boat tour and I meet four women from Long Island, New York. It's like a rite of passage. It's like, it's like a, a, a stamp that we all have that you just, when you come out the hospital, they hit you right in the forehead. It's an invisible one. Right. But you can just tell like you, when, not only when you hear somebody, but when you look at somebody, you just go, oh, that's an East coast native. I just got to, I got a fucking feeling. Exactly. Right now. And we always just end up finding each other. I swear on my trip, I was there for a total of seven days. I met seven different New Yorkers. Most of them were all from Long Island. It was crazy. Like were they living there or just visiting? No, they were all just visiting. We were all literally in Portugal at the same time. Portugal, out of all the countries to go to, like, what? I feel like most people are experimenting with traveling to Europe more and more because let's be let's be real for a second. You look at, yeah, you can just turn it. I mean, I think it's like, like uh, Yeah, no, you got here, ready? You, you can, I don't want to eat the mic because last time, remember, you kept yelling at me on the podcast yeah, yeah. to stop eating the mic because I was like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like right here is like the perfect <laughs> distance. Um, I, I, I feel like people are kind of over the Caribbean. I yeah. think I think the Caribbean is dope. Don't get me wrong. I I went to the Bahamas a few times, did the Puerto Rico thing. It's great, but you know, unless you really know where to go in the islands of like the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas, all that stuff, it's so expensive. I don't want to fuck up. Right. When I look at a trip like that, I just don't want to fuck up because you look at something that the hotels are four five hundred a yeah. night, and and the airfare just to get down there, and it's a small island, so you have to take the extra plane trips right. and this and that. So. I, I believe that people are starting to like look at Europe, look at Hawaii, because I know a lot of people have gone to Hawaii lately yeah. too, yeah. especially from the East Coast. And they that was kind of my thought process. It's like, well, I can go to the Bahamas for four grand or I can go to fucking Hawaii for right. four grand. I'm going to do Hawaii. Hawaii is dope. Yeah. Not only do I, have to, I don't have to worry about you know visas or anything, or like the uh, passports and whatnot. I can just get in, chill out, and dip. And it's and it's it's nice. So Europe is becoming that, in my yeah. opinion. I see a lot more people traveling to Europe. Uh, there's a girl that goes to OG. I believe she was just in Croatia. She was partying on boats and that. Yeah, yeah, she, yacht week. Yeah, yeah. She, yacht was, week. she was meeting a ton of people from like yeah. Australia and all yeah. these different people. And it's pretty cool to see that type of environment. I think the only other place that you see that would be like an Ibiza or somewhere that has some type of crazy clout where social yeah. media just takes over and people want to go. But experimenting with different countries, you're fucking huge. Yeah, it is huge. So the one thing, this is this is my second solo trip and this is my, sec- my well, 
I've been to Europe a couple times, but like this is like my second solo trip where I'm going to Europe. Now, what I love about going to Europe is so easy to travel once you're in Europe. You can go like for an example, like I was in Portugal and I went down the entire coast and like I took a train, I took a bus, like I took flights and it was so cheap and so easy to take a four hour train ride from Lisbon down to Lagos. It cost me for first class $30, 30 dollars, 30 euros, right? Beautiful. For first class and I didn't have to think about it. I just sat on the train, had Wi-Fi, worked on my laptop. It was so easy. And then, you know, the other thing about Europe is like once you're there, the culture is just so different in Europe. And now I think that the reason why like Americans and like people from like we it's naturally easier for us to go to the Caribbean because it's just like our comfort zone, it's right, right? there. And like a lot of people don't like to step out of their comfort and a lot of people don't like to just travel internationally because they don't know where to go, what to do, how to do it. I got to be really honest, how I plan my Portugal trip, all through TikTok. Damn. Shout out to TikTok. Shout out to TikTok. Send the, send the TikTok. check. Right? Still waiting so, on it. Send the check. I know, literally. I'm still waiting <laughs> on my check from TikTok. It's like five years I deep. I got 53,000 like- <laughs> followers. I haven't made a fucking cent. Actually, I did a live and my boy Gabe came in and he was sending me mad roses. I think the, the goal was 10 roses yeah, 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 and it puts yeah. it up there. He sent me 10 roses. I go, oh, that's double, great. He's double tapping. Like it's uh, whatever, TikTok, you suck. Um, <laughs> but you learned everything. You learned everything from TikTok. Everything. Like I just really typed in like Portugal travel and like I had all these like other creators just like I literally planned out from the restaurants like where to go, how to do it, like what buses to take and stuff like that. Of course, I made some mistakes. So I actually can't wait to do and post all my mistakes that I made of like my European trip. But let me just say it was like the most beautiful experience. One, I I think everyone should, should solo travel at least one point in their life. It is like the best experience. At first, it's lonely because you're just like, <laughs> What do I do by myself, you know? But the one thing I love is like meeting other people and stepping out of my comfort zone to talk to people. Uh, We all know I'm friendly, you know, like I have a personality. I could probably talk to a brick wall to, you know, and entertain myself. Facts. But one thing that really makes me uncomfortable is like when I'm, when I'm meeting like new, new people and like I'm struggling for conversation because for me it's like I can talk about like fitness and all these different things but when you're solo traveling like how do you really break the ice with people right yeah so I met like the most like beautiful like women and like beautiful souls while I was down in Portugal just like people who were from different cultures different countries um different religions and like getting to know and talk to these people outside of America and just thinking about like the American way of like how we work and how we just like it's people just work, 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 work. And like how people do it in Europe is that they work to live. They don't live to work, Yeah, you know? So it's just a very different culture. So that's one thing I really love and enjoy about going to Europe. And I highly suggest everyone goes to Europe. It's, it's easy, it's cheap, and it's just so fun. And getting to talk to Europeans is just so nice. Like talking to people who are older than me, younger than me, my age, like just seeing how people think and view things. Like I met people from Dubai. I met people from France. I met people from Portugal, obviously, you know? And like, it was just such a beautiful experience for me because I never thought that I would step out of that comfort because, you know, even like making friends with girls is very difficult because girls are just not nice to each other. I obviously, everyone knows I grew up in the fitness industry and like in that industry, like girls are just not nice to one another. No, she's lying. It's the most welcoming... It's the most welcoming fitness like community like, on the planet. It's crazy. It's, like it's, it's the best. It's it's just crazy, especially because I was so young getting into like the bodybuilding industry. I was sixteen. I'll never forget my first show. My my first year of doing shows. I was seventeen years old, and I was doing. Um, I was in Pittsburgh at Teen Nationals. These girls were backstage, like, cutting other girls, like, bikinis and suits and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. Now, mind you, like, at the time, I was 17, so these girls probably had to be, like, 23 to, like, 30s and stuff like that. So that was, like, one of my first experiences. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is awful. Like, are they really, like, that's weird to me. But anyway, so it's very, like, it's hard, like, when girls make friends with other girls and stuff like that. But these women that I met on this trip was just, like, incredible like they all added so much value to my life and I'm like forever grateful for this trip so I highly suggest solo travel and go to Europe and if you want Portugal I got you I'll give you all the good content that's cool because I love that side of social media that's the side that I actually love and I believe Mm -hmm. that that's what it was really originally created for I mean it was created for Mark Zuckerberg to get laid but for sure (laughs) let's be fucking honest but at the same time Tom from MySpace yeah Tom Tom the homie (laughs) But um, I miss that shit. I tell everybody to this day, if somebody pisses me off, I go, yo, if MySpace was around, yo, you'd be deranked on my top list so quickly. Don't act like that ever again. from three to zero. Three to to off the top. Like, don't ever act like that again. It's nuts. Um, But this is like, this is the cool part of social media that 
you could almost experience a country just by sitting in your fucking living room yeah. and seeing all the spots and all the stops that you want to take. What I find cr- pretty interesting is I, I, I believe one of the, the tough, stronger points that people have against solo traveling, especially in Europe or the Middle East or whatnot, is safety. Yeah. And it's a scary thing because there's a lot of shit that does go on in other countries that technically does go on here, but there's more of a veil on it and you're not really a target for it. Right. But then you almost have to think about like, have you been to Chicago? No. Okay. I've not been to Chicago. I would feel more uncomfortable in Chicago than I would in Switzerland yeah. or in France, to be on to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't see myself going to visit there because you just look at the statistics of crime right. and shootings and whatnot. And it's just, it, it do I want to fucking go there? Or right. like, what? which which place would I take a risk going to? And I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to France. Fuck right. this. Like, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that shit. So when people think that the United States as a whole is just so much safer, it's like, it's, eh, it's not, it's not really that much safer. I don't, you know, I think it's, I think anywhere that you go is you're going to have your good and you're going to have your bad, no matter what. I think, you know, I can only speak for myself, but like in the beginning, solo traveling was definitely, especially like my dad. Cause you, I mean, you know, my dad, he's love you, dad. You're great. <laughs> love you so much. But you know, like my dad, he, and rightfully so. My your parents' job is to make sure that you're safe and you're alive at all costs, right? Mom has, my mom has ulcers when I went to North Carolina. Uh, I, I, listen, North, my North Mom, Carolina. I love you, mom. I love you, mom. But my my mom is a psycho. She <laughs> has my location. She'll she'll locate me and be like, "Where are you? Huh? Why, why are you here? Okay, what are you doing in that coffee shop? You know." So, but again, rightfully so. Yeah. Like I don't have my own kids, so I could only imagine what type of mom I'm like I'm that be, with my first you know? kid like, over there. I'm, I'm like that with him. I'm like, uh, every three seconds, I hear a noise in the other room, and I go, "What are you doing?" I, you know, he'll walk in, he'll poke his head, and like, "I'm just chilling, bro." I was like, "Okay." Yeah. So I think you know my best advice when it comes to things like that is just being really aware, aware of your surroundings and being aware of the information that you tell people. Right. So like, there's to an extent, like I feel things out. Like when people are like, "Oh, are you here by yourself?" I'm like, "Oh no, I'm just in the coffee shop by myself." But like my mom's back at the hotel. Like you know, yeah. you just you're you're very weary, but. Europe, it's so common for people to travel by themselves that it is, I did not feel safe at any point during my trip. Even, I'll be honest, like, and people will fight me on this. Even when I was in Morocco last year, I did not feel safe. And although I definitely went to Morocco not, I don't want to say I didn't, because I didn't go there with the intent not to respect the culture, but I didn't do enough research for myself, for sure, when I first got there. And I definitely needed to switch that up, like, really quick, like, for my clothing, the way that I presented myself and everything like that, because it's just a different country, right? You have to, you have to experience these things. So I always suggest- That's your first experience in, like, the Middle East? Absolutely. That was, well, so it's actually, it's in the northern part of Africa, Morocco. So, and to be honest with you, like, I was in the city center of Marrakesh, so I really kind of just assumed that's, like, being in, like, Times Square, you know, Uh just in that type of sense where it's like touristy and stuff not true like I was staying in like a very small village and looking around like it was just very it was a very different experience women have their faces covered with just their eyes showing then here I am in a sports bra and some leggings and some sneakers just showing up you know so I definitely changed all my outfits I went shopping into like the village and then people started treating me much differently because like I was interesting how it's interesting how you start respecting the culture and you start abiding by their standards in the country and they start showing you love exactly so it's just like that so some Something like that, like made it that much safer for me. And I think had I not done that, I would have been a more of an easy walking target. So I just think that you have to be aware of your surroundings, do research when you go to like these countries. I did a lot of research about Portugal beforehand. And it's like one of the safest countries in Europe. It's a big travel. They're trying to make it like more touristy and very welcoming. But like, you, you saw nothing. It was clean. Like all these cities that I went to are very touristy areas. Like my favorite was Albufeira. Oh my God. If you guys have the opportunity, please go to this city. It is so gorgeous. Like, but it is all tourists. You can leave your bag. I left my bag open with my tripod, my camera, my passport. I left it open on the beach and was going in the water. Nobody even looked in my direction. So when I hear stuff like that, I think of what is the penalties for crime? When I hear stuff like that, because the they're same, very, they're very strict. That's what I'm saying. Like so that's it's, so you think of like presence, Dubai, everything. Dubai, you, I could fall asleep with all of my money on my chest in Dubai in the middle of just 
anywhere and no one's going to steal from me generally. I mean, I'm sure right. there's somebody that would fuck it's with different. it. different. But no one's going to steal with you because they'll take a hand. Like, they right. don't play that shit out there. So it's not here where the dude gets away with the crime yeah. and he gets to get out, let out on bail 24 hours later and he's out doing the same shit the next day. Oh, don't it's, even get me started with that. Oh, it's, uh, it's tough. Well, because now you know how in Los Angeles now they just, like, decriminalize that, right? Oh, we're going to get to Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to the shithole that I you know, call home. I know. This is, this is the whole episode is just about the East Coast versus the West Coast. We I all know that Rizzles does not like California, especially LA. Everybody that I know that has moved out to there, uh, moved out to California, has come back. I, I want to call. I want to go back to Morocco, but uh, all I gotta, all I gotta say is I fantasized about living in California for a good amount of my. Uh, teenage life. I don't know if it was because I consistently saw shows on Nickelodeon and all these different places like Rocket Power and stuff like that. And you see this outdoor culture of everyone outside and yeah. doing things and having fun and the ocean and piers and blah, 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 blah. And it just, it looks amazing. And then- La La Land. Exactly. And then P Hollywood paints an amazing picture of this La place. La Land. They go, come look, come look. It, it's luxurious and the, the streets are painted in gold and, the, you know, all this type of shit. But what they don't tell you is that, you know, there's a section that's okay. And then the rest of it is just everyone not only trying to get by, but crime and poverty and right. fakeness and just people that believe that they're more than they actually are. And there's nothing wrong with believing that you're destined for more, doing more, but big you know, difference between being delusional and realistic. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, I find that most of that city, most of that that state is in that delirious type of a fucking mentality. And it it's just not great. When I went out there my first time, that was in 2018. 2018, I went out there for my first time, my first visit. I remember that. Because I because I, I, I LA moved, Fit Expo. Yeah, I remember yep. that because I was moving. I moved in 2019, so I remember that because I I was going to the Fit Expo as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I went out there. I looked around, and I couldn't get over just the bars on people's windows. Oh, the, I know the boarded up like bars that so people couldn't get in to steal. And I'm looking around. I'm just like, where where's like the the wealth, the right. crazy cool part that you see on all these shows and all these TVs, movies and whatnot. And then after I did the expo for a few days, uh, we were staying in downtown LA. Let that's, me and that's where I live. Uh, let me tell you, uh, it was like Grand Theft Auto every night. <laughs> I I'm telling you, I was. It's, and if you think that, because in 2018 it was it was nice. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it was now nice. It's even now worse. it's 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 even worse. Well, the crazy thing is they let things get so out of control, and I don't care left right doesn't matter when doesn't you matter. let something get out of control like that. You. To beat it back into submission is yeah. fifty times harder, if if at all possible. It, it's not like I got to be really honest, like because I've seen it go from because you know don't forget like I was bi coastal for a while, like when I would have like clients out there because my little sister lived out there, so it was easy Does for she me. She still live out there. Yeah, yeah, she's still out there. Okay. But we're, we're we're both all right. Um, uh. You know, like. So when she had her apartment out there, it was easy for me to just like go stay out there, train a couple clients, do what I got to do. And then I would do some like modeling gigs out there. So I was bi-coastal for a couple years before I even actually plunged to make the move. Yeah. So I just remember when I, before I moved there, California was so beautiful to me. Yeah. Like it was, it was beautiful. I liked, I enjoyed the people. Like I enjoyed like what I was doing out there. I enjoyed the lifestyle. And then let's be honest, like I do like the fitness stuff. To an extent, the fitness industry out there. Because well, it's, it's much just, heavier because people right, have to be in shape year right, round and right. people take care of themselves and, generally more. Absolutely. And as a trainer, there's not as much competition because everybody wants to be in shape. It's a vain city. Everybody wants to be in shape. There's clients and stuff to go around. And the people aren't so as cutthroat when it comes to things like that because they're kind of like, you know. Oh yeah, it's cool. You get yeah. yeah, whatever. It's very different. Where out here, they're like, "Don't fucking touch my client. Don't fucking talk to my client." You got that? Like, but in California, they're like, "Yeah, you want to train? That's cool." Like, man, they don't even match my energy anyway. It's all good. They don't match my vibe. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? But what are you, you know, fucking just, talking about? Just, that's another conversation. So it's, it's it was so different. Once I moved out there before COVID, it was still cool. Like it was still beautiful. Like I was living in Hollywood. I liked it. It was great. COVID 
really did a number on that state. Just in, and I, and I, I think it was every state, every major city or anything like that. Because even New York City, let's be honest, like New York City is a toilet now too. I don't go to the fucking you city. Know, like I don't go to the city. I don't even want to get jobs in the city. It, I don't even care. Yeah, it's, it's not even worth it for me to bring different. all my gear in, lug everything in, get a get Have a to garage. Worry about everything. It's just it's just it's not, not something. It. And then now I've just watched California just go from worse to worse to worse to worse. And like even in downtown Los Angeles, like is a very it's so weird because where I live at, right across the street from the Staples Center, the Crypto Center, whatever the hell. I, I can't even deal with that, too. Can't. CryptoArena.com. Like, that, well, who says that? Like, who, that's a lot to say. Whatever. I'm calling it the Staples Center. Yeah. I live right across the street, and it's like, I live in a very wealthy neighborhood, and I live in a luxury high-rise, right? Where but I'm it's sure they charge you top dollar. Yes, and it's a fight for my life to walk two blocks up to go to work. I swear, because I leave at 5.05 in the morning, and you just see it's a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, they're all out in the it's, mornings. It's all out in the morning, and, like, they're literally, like, smoking crack and doing fentanyl and all this stuff in the in the sidewalk. Yep. I'm watching on my two-block walk at least 10 people hitting a crack pipe. And it's like, why do I spend almost $3,000 and then have to fight for my life? And then it's like, you get harassed, they follow you, they're violent, and I hate to even say it, and then they're very mentally ill. So it's like, you can't even, like, blame them because they're not even here. Like, and there's just nothing being done about it. And the thing that really irks me is, I think it was last year, we had a bunch of um, all the, like, all the nations had, like, their presidents, higher-ups of government, our president was there all in the convention center across the street from my house. Do you know what they did? They had every single police officer in all of Los Angeles County in that area picking up all the homeless people and then dropping them on the other side of downtown to Skid Row. <laughs> Why? Because then they had the president saying, oh my God, look at Los Angeles. Look how it pretty is so it is. so pretty it is. Look how cleaned up it is. No, have you taken a, a look? Like, let's have some common sense. They have barricades all up and down the streets of from Figueroa, from right across from me, all the way down to the far end of the, the city and so no one can get in or get out and of course they're going to make it seem like that because you have all these government officials and all these different nations and stuff like that but let's be honest it's a shithole yep. so we, we're lying now to make it seem like it's something that it's not because you know lovely Gavin Newsom and I'm not even into politics like that but he has run nah, that he's, into he's, that nah he's he's a fucking loser from he, everything that I've seen him do anything anytime I've seen him speak he's like a creepy plastic Weirdo. figure that's just been placed there to just right. cause havoc and mayhem. And that's exactly what it is. And Same it's thing like, with the dude Trudeau in fucking Canada. He's another mm -hmm. cunt. I, sorry, excuse me, hate him. Don't like him. Is what it is. You know, it, this is the way the cookie crumbles. I just don't like people that manipulate other people. Right. I don't like people that lie. I don't. I, I don't like. I don't like people that lie, manipulate, prey on the weak. Right. I don't like. I don't like wolves in sheep clothing. That's right. what I don't like. Like, look how, oh, look, look, I'm just a, I'm just trying to do my job. I'm trying to do that. But you no. have all your ulterior motives and you got kickbacks and you got everything right. on the side that you're you're getting gain, capital gains from all the shit that you're allowing to happen. Yeah. It's just insane. And it's just like, how how is it that like and I don't even think most people know this, but like years ago, they used to have a homelessness tax on our taxes in California oh, that shit. they had to uplift because everyone was now getting like mad because they're like, okay, I'm paying all these taxes, but how is, where's the money going to? They, California said, we don't know where the money's going. Um, yeah, shocker. I, I don't I don't report a couple so of things on my tax returns and then I get fucking audited. Right. And the they, IRS is like knocking on your door. Yeah. But in California, it's okay to take my money and then not tell me where my money's going. And like that was what was starting to irk me. Like that was way before I moved out there. But like people who have been born and raised there have told me that. Like, yeah, we used to pay that. And then like everyone got fed up. And then all of a sudden, once people started speaking up, boom, it was off your taxes. And then now it's, oh, we have all these nonprofits and stuff like that. Do you know how much these homeless nonprofits make? Like how they collect a paycheck? How are you getting paid two hundred thousand dollars a year? Yeah, and we still have a homeless problem. Like, I'm not the brightest crayon in the box, but like, if I was to have a dollar for every condemned building that we have in downtown, why can't we do something with those? Like, it's just crazy to me. And like, where I'm getting sick of it is, listen, California is beautiful. It's great. It's the logistics for me. I don't ever want to raise a family out there. Fuck no. I would. I couldn't think of anything worse of having Fuck a no. little bratty child sending them to like Beverly Hills High, and then you're gonna come come home every day telling me to go f off and telling me this that that I need to go buy you this and I need to this. I don't like it. 
I my mother would backhand me if I ever, you know, God forbid. Um, that and then it's the taxes out there. Then it's the fact of like you're paying so much more money and then I don't have anything to show for it. Yep. Everyone used to joke like, you know, when I first moved out there is we pay for the good weather and we pay for we pay for the scenery and stuff like that. Like people that. will go poor in, in California because we care more about like the weather and all that. But now logistically, I'm just like, this is stupid to me. I'm spending all this money and I've calculated like I could have had a down payment on a house with how much I have in rent yep. over the last four years. It's insane, yeah. but I have nothing to show for it anymore. It's disgusting. I, it I think uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of people that that don't have anything to show for it in no. all parts of the world, and uh, California especially because California is is insanely priced. I've, I look at real estate all over the place just because I'm always I do my little Zillow dream hunt. Like, yeah. oh, I'd be fat if I could live in this house. I like Carlsbad. I look at Carlsbad, San Diego area, stuff like that. I I think that if I ever did California, I'm not. If I ever did California, those would be the places that I'd gravitate towards. Southern, yeah, no. su like really, really Southern California. But, but even that, it's still, it's San Diego it's, is disgusting. It's Downtown San Diego is like a totally different place now. Never been I was there. just, I was just there. Yeah. I was just there not too long ago for New Year's. And it's like. I think for a long time, from what I understood, is the military presence is what kept kept yep. it so clean and up, yep. up nice and whatnot. Yeah, because it's very Even though naval. it's right on the border of Mexico. Yeah. Well, that whole area is all like Navy and, and stuff like that. So like now, but even with that, all those veterans are home. Homeless. You have a very big, high homeless veteran over in San Diego. Uh, that bothers me like so there's bad. a two block radius of just straight tents of just homeless, and it oh that that is the one, number one that irks me because veterans yeah yeah is because they don't take care of them they, they put don't. their lives on the line they that to be honest with you I, the the more that this grows and I'm able to actually start funding some things I want to do veteran stuff I, yeah I, I have to it yeah. just it bothers me yeah. that we are not taking care of the people yeah. that serve our country I always have because you know everyone knows that my little brother I love him so much I have to stop saying little but because he's a grown man but <laughs> my baby brother love him to death he is he serves in the Air Force you know so like right now he's on a he's currently in a deployment and I even just see how he gets treated while he's in the military yep. you know and now like watching these guys like outside of the military because like you I always make sure that the number one thing, I, I always do two things. One, every time I see a veteran with a hat or anything, I always go out of my way. I don't care what I'm doing. I will drop it. Thank you for your service. Thank you. I appreciate if, um, you. If I'm at Starbucks or anything, anywhere I am, I always say I'll take a look around. If they, I see someone behind me, I'll tell them whatever they're getting, I would like to pay for it. Or I'll turn around and be like, can I please buy you a coffee? Thank you so much for serving our country. Like, And they people get shocked. They look at me like, Oh my God, thank you. Like, I always do that. And it's like, it's so sad to me that like nobody else can do that. You can't turn around and say thank you to the people that protect you, like while you're living in your gated community. And just uh, what people in America don't understand is they don't ever have to go outside and see a war. Yeah. In other countries and other places, like kids and, and people our age, like they have to fear for their life going outside every single day because they, they might see some crazy shit. We're very fortunate enough. And that's the thing that irks me about like with Americans is that it's the entitlement and it's the stuff that they take for granted. Like you really mean to tell me you're gonna walk by a homeless man in San Diego and not even give him a dollar? But he just protected you and he is so mentally messed up with the PTSD and everything like that. And you're just going to walk by on your cell phone with your iPhone 14 Pro, whatever, and your Louis Vuitton bag. And you're just going to keep walking. But this man, like, so, come on. Those things bother me. And then they don't have the resources. They can't even get, like, good medical care in, like, the, the, the VA hospitals. Have you ever been to, like, a VA hospital? I haven't. I've heard horror stories, though. You're I have a lot of people grossest. I know that are, that are veterans. And I heard that they are horrible. They're gross. Yeah. They are disgusting. But hey, I mean, on the bright side, they put uh, in New York City, they put a facility that you can shoot up uh, illegal drugs and there's a nurse waiting if you overdose that they can revive you. So, I mean, there's that. They, you know, we have money to put into those programs. I love that. Also yeah. in Starbucks, you're allowed to like, they open up like the bathrooms and like you could like go openly like do drugs and oh, stuff. Oh, that's good. Like that's it's good. it's crazy. And then even in San Francisco, they have vending machines That'll now. be good. That'll be good for the child that goes into the bathroom afterwards and the, and dirty, the, the dirty syringe is still right. in there. That'll be and great. Then in San Francisco, they now have like almost like vending machine types and they have like crack pipes, um, like sanitary things to, to clean your needles and stuff. Like it is gross. Like my last episode, 63. Y'all remember what I said if you listened. The consistent decline of civilization and society. This is exactly what that is. Yeah. There's no masking it. There's no thinking that it's any other type of way. A government would not willingly, knowingly put drug vending machines and spots for you to go shoot up drugs that not only are going to fuck you up, 
but get you addicted and make you uh, a strain on the medical system, they wouldn't do that, which is, by the way, funded by our tax dollars, yep. if they actually wanted the civilization to prosper. I, I don't know how much more we can just fucking watch. It's very tough. And I don't believe that, you know, we need to like rally against the government. I think we just need to literally speak with our dollars and show that we don't play these fucking games right. and actually have a voice instead of sitting there and go, because I know so many people, ah, well, you know, I, I don't make a difference. It's like, well, you by yourself don't. But if 30 of you, and then 60 of you because the 30 had another 30, and then 120 of you because now it doubled again, now we're getting somewhere. But the consistent downward spiral that we're on is palpable. It's not good. No, it really is. It is not good. And this resorts right back to like what I was saying, like even like the life in Europe and stuff like that. Like I just really look at like the down the downfall of like America is this is, this is what bothers me. We... It's an entitlement and we're, we enable people, right? Because, and especially like somewhere in California is like, it's an enablement because how people look at it is like, well, it's okay. Like I'd rather them be safe and do drugs and, and have the proper care to do it. Cause if not, they're going to do it anyway, but you're enabling these people yep. instead of helping them, you're enabling them and you're not doing anything to, to be productive for them. Like, you're just going to let them just pass by life? Like, I'm sorry. I can't keep you – I cannot give people passes in life. And this is where I struggle in California is, like, I have to be blunt and direct, and I can't keep giving you passes. I just can't enable you. I can't do it. Yeah. I'm I can't pretend that it doesn't bother me. I can't I'm do it. I'm doing you a disservice. And, like – being able to go get a clean crack pipe or being able to get clean needles somewhere so I can go and do my drugs. Um, let's wake up and smell the coffee. The government is enabling us to do this. That's because it's it's for multiple reasons. They want to dumb us down. Yep. They want to turn a blind eye so then we don't think about all the things that they're doing. Yep. You know, that's why they are so obsessed with having like pop culture. This is why they're so obsessed with if you if you ever look at the presidential elections, who are the main people that they like uh, have promoting them is all rappers, artists, actresses, actors, because it's it's easy and it's relatable. If your favorite actor or your favorite rapper is voting for this person, da, 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 I should go do the same. Right. So it's like it's. It's to rope people in. Top, and to, tier, top tier influencers. Right. That's what that is. That's exactly. the term. It's it's to rope people in so then we're stupid and we're not looking like this and we're more obsessed with Kim Kardashian than we are with the fact that that no country wants to use the U.S. currency anymore. No one ev even talks about those yeah, things. Yeah, why don't we talk about it's, bricks? It's crazy to me. You know, it's, it is so crazy that you could ask a girl in our age bracket, they'll know more facts about the Kardashian family than they would know about anything else. They barely know the fucking states. They can't name all the states in our own country. They they don't know anything. And it's crazy to me. Or even like, you know, people are like, why is your brother getting deployed? I'm I'm sorry. Are you not aware that we're probably going to enter like World War Three within the next like five years from now? Yep. What do you mean? And I'm like, that's because you're so obsessed with whatever it is that you have going on, like in your day-to-day -day life and scrolling on Instagram and you care more about X, Y, and Z than like real life things that are actually kind of scary things, you know? Like people have no idea what's going on. Of, like, nuclear apocalypse is scary. Right. Like it's scary for anybody. Have no idea like what goes on outside of that. And again, like me traveling and like seeing all these things and talking to different people, like they just care about way different things that are more important things. And this is why people view America as a joke. And because we're not as educated. We we care about all the wrong things. And it's just, it, it is a joke to other people in other countries. So that was like the major thing that I loved about my trip was like opening up a, a blind eye almost because I felt ignorant. There were topics that like I was talking with with people from like Dubai and all this different stuff where I did, I 110% felt so uneducated and a little ignorant. Like I did feel a little stupid at some points because they were just like, why do you even, what? Like that's something you guys care about? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is the Dubai government allowing the junkies to stay on the street and giving them fresh needles and whatnot? No. No, probably not. Even in Portugal, like, I, I didn't even see, like, any homeless people. Nothing. Yeah. And if I did, it was, it was a couple, and, like, they were just, like, there. And they didn't even, like, bother anybody. They were nice. It was, it, you know, that's that's where that comes in. But it's, like, California has definitely has definitely turned into a place where it's just, like, it's 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 scary. It's, it's one of those things where it's, like, I really just... 
I personally don't enjoy living there anymore. Yeah. When I, I told don't. you that it sounds, I, I know I'm not but like, listen, I told I you before I told you beforehand and everyone has to go and experience things because it might be different. Yeah. You may love it Yeah. and you may go out there and you may experience it in a different way than I did. And you may say, wow, this is amazing. I really do enjoy being out here and whatnot, but you know, just consistently watching just things degrade. Yeah. It's it, listen, even in New York, Let's be honest. Let's 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 not paint it like this is an amazing picture over here in New York. Have I thought about leaving here and going somewhere else without question? But family's here. Yeah. I'm comfortable here. And I'm not in New York. I'm on Long Island. Right. It's a little different. It's, it's different. If I was in the city, I would have dipped already. I would have been yeah. out. I would have been out a long time ago. I believe that most of us uh that that have paid attention have had our eyes opened um since COVID. Yeah. And we've been able to almost have a veil lifted over our face of what life is, what life should be. And we're asking more questions. The issue though, is that we're not getting the questions answered. We're getting, you know, pacified and our backs padded and they're, they're not, exactly. They're not telling us everything. Right. And, you know, just allowing things to slip further and further. Whereas, you know, 10 year ago, Nick, 12 year ago, Nick, I, I'd be just like, Oh, I guess that's just how things are. It's like, no, 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 right. no, 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 no. It's it's not how things are. Right. Things need to change. This is not good. And you know, one of the topics that I had on as a joke uh, was the uh, alien stuff. Now, so the <laughs> which I put a fucking. <laughs> did you saw my TikTok video? Oh my god! So I it's cannot. just. I mean, the the ones from about, Vegas, right? The oh no, not even Vegas. The the new ones from Mexico City. Have you seen those ones? No, I didn't. I only yes. saw the one. I only saw the, the Mexico one from City Vegas. ones. The Mexico City ones. They unveiled aliens uh, to the uh, Congress down there. They're evidently thousand year old. You know, basically uh, mummified in a certain type of clay. The aliens. I'm telling you, I've seen those at Spirit Halloween. Stop it. And. They're almost, they're pushing, the, it's it's almost like because we have the veil lifted now, you kind of sit there and you question things more. I question everything now. I question everything now. I question, people go to me, they're like, well, you don't believe that space is real? I go, I mean, I don't think it's not real, but I also don't know if it is. I, have you been up there? Right. Have you have you been out there with the fucking space people and the astronauts? Have you gone on a, on a spacewalk <laughs> right. and seen that the world is not only not flat, but it's also spaces like what did they tell us? Right. You haven't. So then you're just blindly following a different side. You're just list and again, this is like what they want though. Is like they, they want, want division. You to just, yeah. They want you to just listen and follow and fall into line. And I can't. I can't, I do, can't it do it anymore. No, no, no. I, I, I question everything. I can't. Now. Like I said, I just my mom can't. shit. Like they got this FEMA shit going on October fourth. Now I'm like the phone's staying in the car and I'm turning everything off. Like I, I don't play these games. Like I just I hear information and I make my choices based on them. And I just right. I take the information with a grain of salt because there's a lot of fucking crazy shit out there. Right. Like you know I me mean? TikTokers and people on the internet said that this hurricane was gonna smash into the East Coast, drown New York, and this and that. That shit went all the way up there and all the way up north to Nova Scotia. And by the time it hit Nova Scotia. It was a um, a tropical decline or whatever they call it, a post cyclone. Did you hear about my hurricane in Los Angeles? I heard that the it was scariest, supposed to be one. It was the scariest moment of everyone's life. We were all fearing. Yeah, they probably got mad groceries bought purchased. I didn't even I didn't even know that this was supposed to be like a, a hurricane because obviously from the East Coast, I survived Hurricane Sandy. I survived hundreds of hurricanes in my lifetime of living here. Um, blackouts, you name it, like we've done it. So when I first heard it, I looked at the weather report. I was like, oh, this is rain. We got some water, <laughs> right? But like everyone in Los Angeles are like, oh my God, you're not freaking out? Da, da, da. I go to the grocery store because like I had plans to just like cook with um, one of my one of my neighbors, right? So I'm I'm like, why can't I find anything? And then I'm looking at all these lines, I'm looking at all these people and I'm like, why is everyone panicking? Yeah. And then one everyone woman, buying ten dollar gas and, and shit. And then there's this one woman. Oh my god, move! Oh my! And I'm like, fuck! <laughs> what's happening? And she's like, I'm in distress. I don't even know what to do. I don't know how to feel. I don't know. I've never had a hurricane before. What are we gonna do? And I'm like, distress. I'm like, um, we're gonna first. Get, let's take a deep breath. We're gonna get through this. We're, we're gonna. It's gonna be okay. And then nothing happened. Yeah, nothing happened. Nothing happened. It yeah. was really just rain. But like people just get so obsessed because like they believe everything that they hear. Yep. You know. And that goes on. That goes on. And everywhere. I have to take the disclaimer. It goes on every side. It everywhere. goes on the conspiracy theory and the crazy. The, everywhere. The everyone's trying to kill you deep state side right. of things. And it goes on to the, you know, nut job. I believe everything I hear from right. mainstream media. It's exactly. Just, you, you have to you have to take information. And you have to make your own choices on them. But at the same time, you got to stay calm. Right. No matter what, no matter how crazy shit gets, and whatever your whatever information is presented to you that would normally rattle the cage, 
You gotta just chill. Chill, yeah. Chill out and just see what happens. Exactly, and I'm trying to learn that so much because like anyone who knows me knows I'm very like, ah, uh, you know, type yeah. person, you know, but I'm trying to learn that like chill and like not let the emotion, the emotional aspect of you get like the best of you to like overthink like all those things, right? Like you have to really just let your mind be stronger than your emotions when it comes Which to Which is things. difficult and, and it takes practice. It does. It takes, it takes a while. So, you know, that's something I'm like really making a heavily, heavily, heavily thing that I'm trying to focus on more. It's just like believing half of what I hear and all the things that I could actually see and control for myself, you know? Um, and just really thinking on more of a logical aspect instead of an emotional aspect so you don't get so crazed about certain things and topics right so you just like are more level-headed because once you can not let your emotions get the best of you and dictate then you won't you'll be more successful in life with anything that it is that you do so like as I'm watching these people in California but like that's just like how it is out there like mm -hmm. it's it's different like but and when I say this like first of all I want to make it perfectly clear as a disclaimer like when we talk about like the LA thing, right? People who are born and raised in LA are the coolest people I've ever met. They really do remind me about a lot of a lot of New Yorkers. Like my friends who were born and raised in East LA, like they are the coolest down to earth people. They are just not like that. When people say LA, and when they ask me like what, a, what how I feel about it, it's just it's like living on a movie set and everybody is an actor. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. But it's and I hate to say it because it's like I li I moved out there, but it's all the people who came from like all these little towns and like now they're just here in that like West Hollywood, Hollywood, congregating downtown, the same area. in that whole little area. And like no matter what industry it is, like it's just a little bit of like a fuckery. And like that's what people go out there to, to be famous, to be somebody, to, you know, so it's a very warped little world out there. But outside of that, like the people who are born and raised out there are much different and they don't even like associate the two. Like they are two totally different. And we're things. talking about regular people, not like the golden spoon fed individuals that were right. raised out there. Regular people, like yeah. just regular people who are believe they have oppression and, and hard times and whatnot and it's just like nah right. man you just you grew up in Malibu you can be all right right it, it, it's totally right. different you can, you can be all right two totally different types of yeah. people out there so it's it's just a different it's a different life and then like when it comes to like the fitness industry and like or even like <sighs> to get into the topic just the facade like people will go out there and because you think you think you know who you are sometimes when you go out there. And listen, I was guilty of it too. When I went out there, like I definitely, you remember, like- What age did you go out there? I was, how old was I? I was 26. Okay, it's a maturity. 31 now. It's a maturity thing. Yeah, like when I went out there, I definitely went out there like knowing who I was. Like I wasn't going out there to go find myself. Like I wasn't leaving Long Island for that. Like I was leaving Long Island just because I wanted to leave, you know? Um, so I was confident in that. But when you get into that world- at some point, like, you do start to question yourself. Like, when you're into that scene, because when I first moved out there, I thought it was cool. Like, I was like, I want to go to all these parties. I want to go to all these fitness events. I want to be around all these people. And as, like, my time out there started to progress, like, and I started to see shit for what it actually was, I was like, oof, maybe I don't. Maybe this isn't. And then I started to, like, kind of lose myself a little bit because I was getting too caught up in, like, um, all – all the the going out scene and how I would kind of like flip it to make myself feel better was oh but like I can go out and network because if I go out to these clubs like I can meet all these other people like rappers singers artists actresses whatever and I could I could train these people yep eh, that's not really the case you know so I started getting like deeper into the scene then I started going to these events and I started just to see things for like what it was and now I like took a step back from it because like I kind of lost sight of who I was I felt like the last like two years I've really struggled like being out there because I realized like I don't even recognize myself sometimes out there because I'm comparing apples to oranges and I started getting insecure and it's like it's very natural like male or female it's not just a, a female thing it's also a male thing because oh, yeah. I've seen it because when you look at like half these people in California especially through Instagram they're you're like oh my god they've made it yeah. they live this like life and it's so not true oh. it is so not true yeah. it is not true the rented car metaphor is like too true and too right. real or like I've met people out there like guys like you look at their Instagram page like you would be like oh my god these are like the the best looking guys they have it all together they make the most money they're renting those cars they have four roommates and they can't even afford to to, to take themselves out to dinner yep but if you look at Instagram, you would think that they're like a multi- Oh, no, they're balling. They're balling. Right. They're, they're the best the best guys in the city. Right. So it's just that like that whole little pocket of like no matter what industry you're in, they all kind of come together. And like that fit the fitness industry out there is just very different. Now, I will say this. Like when I first moved out there, I 
thought that it was going to be much better than what it actually was. Because there is a side of that fitness industry that is really cool. And like what you just got to navigate and find that tribe. Like I'm lucky that now, as opposed to those three years ago, that I found that tribe that like just it's their job. So like we will do like these big group meetups and like workouts and stuff like that, film and network. Those are cool. But then there's that other side of the California fitness industry where it's like not like that, where it's all fake. It's all bullshit. And half these people don't even work out. They just go to the gym, they film their content, and then they leave. But like when you look at them on Instagram, like you would think like, oh, this girl really works out. Da, 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 da. I see them all the time. And it's just fake. It's all fake. People just like fake it till they make it out there. It's crazy. Yeah. And they're using Photoshop and they're using surgeries and they're doing everything just to try to make it so this way they look somewhat like their photos. But we know that they don't look like their photos. We know they don't look like their photos. Wow. Surgery. Um, if I had a dollar for every fitness influencer out there who had like a skinny BBL, had some sort of work done on her, and who are selling like these booty programs or whatever programs that it is that they sell, and it's all bullshit. And I look right through them because I'm like, so you're just not going to tell your 1.5 million followers that like you got surgery and like you took time off to not, 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 not to get off social media. It was to heal your body, to let it recover, right? Like it, it's so noticeable to me because it's like you could look at a built body versus a, uh, a bought body. And listen, I'm not trying to like, I want to make this perfectly clear. I'm not a woman hater. I am a full believer that whatever it is that you want to do that's going to make you feel good, you should go do it. Everybody that knows me knows I got a nose job. I wanted one. It made me feel better. I was bullied in high school. Fuck you guys. I was bullied <laughs> in high school all the time. They called me Big Bird, B Butterface, X, Y, and Z, whatever it was. They fucking destroyed me in high school for my nose. And I hated it. Like, it was something that I couldn't control. And when I got into my adult life, I wanted to go get cosmetic surgery for it. Right? So I'm a firm believer, whatever it is that you want to do, make sure you're in the right mental space to do that. But when you're in L.A. and you – and I think it's any – it's mostly L.A., you get so caught up because, like, you start to think because, one, all these girls look the same because they all go to the same doctor. They so all... you start to question yourself because oh these are God. all the girls that get attention. Like, these are the girls that are all making more money than you and stuff. Then you start to think, like, should I go get my body done? Like, there was one point where I, I, I really – I wouldn't go through with it, but I really was, like, hanging out with, like, a group of girls and stuff that all had their bodies done. And I was like, maybe – maybe like this is what I'm supposed to do, like to fit in. Like maybe this is what, and then you start to question and second guess yourself. Now anyone that it knows distorts me, your, It distorts your own reality. Yeah, it, it really does. Like you really start to lose sight of that sometimes. Or your circle. Right, and then you start to think like, is this what I have to do to make money? Is this what I have to do to get famous? Like if this, and it was just really the wrong mentality for me. And like, that's what I mean earlier when I said like, I started to lose myself because I'm like, I'm always a girl that's worked hard in the fitness industry. I'm always a girl that had to like always prove myself because I'm not just some like bimbo that had a cute body. Like I really had to work for it. Anybody that knows me when I was 16 years old getting into the bodybuilding industry, I had no body. I had to literally build my body from the ground up. And what always frustrated me was like these girls that just like either get the surgeries or they just like have these cute natural bodies. Like they never had to like really work for it or prove it. Right. So I was like, maybe that that's what you, ha you got to do. And you start comparing apples to oranges. And then when you do the research on these surgeries, it is so dangerous. So I look at all these girls and you really got to question like where their mental state's at when they're going and getting these things. I feel kind of sad for most of them. Some of them, they don't care because they're just doing it because they want to do it. But most of them are doing it because they're broken and insecure and they think that if I get if I get my body done, I'll have a better outcome. Um, I'll get more attention. Guys will like me more. I'll get more modeling gigs. I'll get more video shoots. I'll get all these different things. And then before you know it, you could die. You can get really sick. Like, look at all these people who are now, like, look at th that one girl from Wild and Out, Jackie. Like, she literally, she just she just died going to get a BBL. Like, Damn. she literally died. And what happens is, is it's one of the most dangerous cosmetic surgeries in the world. Uh, it's now one out of 2,000 girls will die, which is pretty heavy st statistic. And, you know, like, most cosmetic surgeries, it's one in 72,000 will die. And now for a BBL, it's one in 2,000 will die. And from 2011 to 2016, only 25 people have died from a BBL surgery, right? Now it has increased to 37% since 2022 of how many people will die from this surgery because these surgeons are producing like this. Like they're just doing BBL after BBL after BBL. So now that when they're when they're hearing like the because now there's actually a task force that deals with BBLs and like deaths and stuff like that. Isn't that crazy? Well, what's on the Cleveland Clinic website? Then you know it's a problem. Um, 
I guess I just run down real quick. So a Brazilian butt lift, for those that don't know, uh, BBL, is an increasingly popular cosmetic procedure. Uh, a BBL lift increases the size and shape of your butt while removing fat from other areas of your body. Candidates should be, should be in good physical and mental health and have realistic expectations. Right. Um, it's not a traditional lift procedure like a facelift or a breast lift, despite its name. A BBL adds volume to and improves the shape of your butt, but it won't improve sagging and excess, excess skin. Nope. If you have sagging or excess skin, talk to your healthcare provider about a butt lift. So now we're talking two surgeries. Two different surgeries. Two separate surgeries. Uh, doctors called plastic surgeons perform BBLs. Um, I had um, Dr. Buglino on. He didn't speak about BBL specifically. I would love to talk to him about that. Uh, buttock um, augmentation with fat grafting and safe mm -hmm. subcutaneous buttock augmentation, SSBA, are other names for the, per, for the procedure. Yep. And um, I'm trying to see. How long does it last? There we go. 10 years. You have to go get it redone every 10 years. Really? Every 10. So, yeah, seven and years. It, and it may surgery. even last for over a decade without any follow-up treatments. However, your body changes as you get older, yeah. which can affect your results over time. To preserve the effects of a BBL, you should maintain a consistent weight. And how common are they? Let's see. A BBL is a common procedure that's growing in popularity. According to the most recent statistic from the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, there were 21,823 BBLs performed in 2020. The COVID pandemic may have affected the number of butt lift procedures in yeah. 2020 as elective surgeries decreased. Between 2015 and 19, the frequency grew from 14,705 to 28,076. That is fucking nuts. It's crazy because like you can go get a skinny BBL. Like if you're a smaller girl, like you can you can go get a skinny BBL and or you can just go get a regular BBL. So it's like anybody can go and get one. Now, here's my thing. Anybody who took physics, you got you got to remember. OK, so what they do is when you're on the table, they're draining the fat from your stomach. Right. So they take it because you can't it's fat's a solid. So they liquefy it. It goes out of a tube and then they re have to put it back into your butt. That's why girls will like leak. That's why they'll have like all these like um, complications after the surgery. So it re-solidifies after it's put into this new area. That's why they get all this swelling. That's why they have to wear these shapers. That's why they have to do all these things because the fat has to redeposit. It can't, it just will do. So now what happens is over time when you start to think, because most of these girls don't work out, most of them don't do anything afterwards. They get their body done. They go back to eating like shit, drinking alcohol, going out to the club, doing whatever, and they don't take care of themselves afterwards. So it defeats the whole purpose of the surgery. So now over time, what do you think is going to happen? That fat has to deposit and sit. That's why these girls do all these crazy things like the rolling thing with the wood of trying to like re so it doesn't like so it doesn't re clump up or what happens is there's a lot of the girls who have get skinny BBLs because they don't really have any body fat to begin with, their stomachs ripple because the surgeons are taking too much. So in America, I think it's only 4 C 4 MMs that you're allowed to take and to put back in, but other countries don't have regulations. So that's why these girls will fly out to the Dominican Republic, Mexico They'll go wherever because it's cheaper and because these doctors don't care. They don't have to answer to anybody. So they don't do like the medical stuff. It's the same thing you see with veneers. Yeah, exactly. You see, a lot of, you know, you see a couple of success stories from people going to different countries, but you see a lot of fucking horror stories yeah. getting teeth shaved down into little needles and whatnot. Yeah. And just, it's not, it's not great. I it's mean, not. I, listen, I'm all for saving money where you can, but pff, when you start looking at a surgery costs X and it costs, you know, 70% less somewhere right. else. Uh, uh, you really got to think about that. What's what's up? In So the Miami, but Florida in general is like the most common where you go to get a BBL, right? Shocker. So their surgery ranges anywhere from $8,000 to $20,000. Some doctors in, in Miami drop it down to $2,000 so then it's more affordable so then they can pump out more. So what they started to realize is now like that, that the, the, the surgeries are getting more like popular is the doctors were doing like seven surgeries a day and then these then the the death rate was increasing because the surgeons are tired or they're taking too much so they had to start regulating these things so now doctors are only allowed to perform no more than five a day what is killing the people is it is it so it's different things so is, one, it, is it post operation so yeah, where they it, have it, the infections post, and whatnot yep, it's post or it could be during the surgery too because if you inject the fat into the bloodstream on accident you'll die instantly because you can't have the fat be injected into your bloodstream what are the risks and complications of a bbl Getting a BBL poses some risks. 
Your butt contains many blood vessels and nerves. If the cannula strikes any of these structures during the surgery, it can lead to injury, a fat embolism, or mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. uh, bruising, infection, skin discoloration, or changes in the skin sensation, and swelling or poor, poor wound healing. Yep. And um, anything could happen. Anything. It's scary. Like to me, like I'm not I'm, going to risk my life. To, I'm, try, to do I'm trying. I'm trying to stay away from surgery. Right. I had I had my booty surgery. <laughs> not a BBL. Not a BBL. I was like, yeah. damn. Not, not a BBL. Not a BBL. No, no. Uh, I had my booty surgery. This I had two. I had one last June, and then I had one this past year in January. I'm trying to stay away from surgery. I don't even like going to the doctor. I don't either. Fuck these. Like guys. I only go once a year just to go to get my physical, just to make sure like I'm all I good do, in the hood. I do, you know, like I do blood work here and there. That's, that's pretty it. much it. I don't like doing any of that stuff. I don't like getting. I don't like needles. I don't, and I'm not going to subject myself to that. And also, too, the thing that I hate. Where's the mouth? He's right here. He just woke up. He's got hair all over his face. Hey, Come mouth. here. Come here, man. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Um, the thing for me is, is like you could just go work out. I don't even know how to explain that to people. Like I tell these people all the time, like I've had some of my clients, like when they, when I'm training them, they're like, I'm just, an, I'd rather get my body done. And I was like, well, I'm going to drop you as a client because like, I'm not, I'm not putting my name on that. And also yep. too, like you could just work out. I understand that nobody wants to take the time. And this is why I try and explain to people the, with fitness, the beautiful thing about it is when people like, they'll look at my before pictures and my afterwards, um, I tell them it takes time. My side-by-side -side is 10 years apart from my glutes. When I first started in 2010, I had a crack in the back, nothing there. I had, I was skinny fat. I was 120 pounds and I had like probably like close to 30% body fat. But when you looked at me, like I had a cute little body when yeah, I was 16 yeah. years old, you know, but I had to build my body up yeah. to where it is today or even like my glutes. Cause people are like, how are your glutes like this? I worked out. I didn't take any shortcuts. It takes time. It, it's my lifestyle. And I try and tell people, instead of being so focused on either just weight loss or just trying to bulk or anything like that, like, just do it for you. Go to the gym and work out because you want to be happy and healthy. Like, there, there's that whole demographic that people just miss, right? So now it's forced girls into the, to this, like, little box that they feel like they have no other choice. Oh, well, working out is too hard. So I'm just going to get my body done. I'm just going to go spend the $20,000, which is crazy to me it's because insane. now you're going to put yourself at risk. And then it's like you're going to go fly to the Dominican Republic and then you're going to stay there and then try and heal and have all these complications. It is nuts to me. And then honestly, like they don't even do any mental tests to see if these girls are even mentally fit for this. Like I have seen so many girls like just destroy their bodies. And it's the saddest thing to me. And I hate that they even have that mindset of like this is what I have to do to like that. And that was one of the things for me in California of like things that I started to realize about myself I just felt like I was losing myself and I was trying to give in to, to the devil it felt like because like people out there are just very different and I have a very hard time out there is because like I struggle like I do I struggle out there because it you know people will gaslight you and convince you that like you're the problem yeah. out there and that you're thinking is and it is so outlandish to what everybody believes in a little area right and people out there the thing that Here's the thing is when people like ask me like what I what I think is the difference between people in California and people in New York is that I think that people in California are nice, but they are not kind. And I think people in New York, they are not nice, but they are kind. <laughs> and I'll give an example. If you're in New York and you get a flat tire on the road, I'm going to call you a fucking asshole. I'm going to be like, you fucking asshole. What'd you run over a nail? You stupid. Like you didn't think about it. As I'm saying those things to you, I'm going to help you change your tire. In California, they'll just go right by you, roll down the window. Oh. Johnny oh I'm so sorry that that sucks that's I hope your day gets better okay bye it's like it's like it's like fake positivity right. fake fake happy fake all this shit right really what right and then and that and that's what it is is like I'm a good person because I go to church once a week like that type of a scenario right but the but the six other days I'm a piece of shit right and then like people out there like they hone in on like this whole like energy and like all this like different things, right? So like for me, what becomes frustrating is like friendships and people out there, it's like a revolving door because nobody ever wants to put in the work. Like relationships when you're an adult are, are very difficult. Like friendships, difficult. regular like boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, marriage it is. It's it work. It's work. It takes work to have successful things, right? Even with friendships and as an adult, I value my, my adult friendships now. Now, one thing I'm starting to learn is I need to learn personally the big difference between a friend and acquaintance
friends, a best friend, and someone that I could really trust because I'm a little naive sometimes. I'm a little too nice. I'm a little too nice to think like everyone is my friend. Everyone just really likes me. And that was one thing in California. Like in New York, I never used to think like that. I really had like a uh, like a blinder. Like I was like, nah, I see right through all that bullshit. But being out there for four years, I started to think like, no, these people are being nice to me because they like me. Or like these people, it's different. I was living in Lala Fantasy Land and drinking the Kool-Aid. It's not true. Like it's not true because what I started to realize is people will take the things that you tell them and use it against you at some point. Oh, yeah. Or they'll – you'll do 20 good things for people and you'll do one bad thing or you'll make one mistake. They will outlook all of those things that you've done good for them because for me, what I've realized, it's all transactional out there. They'll cast you out like a leper. Like what can you do for me? Oh, and then once you can't do that for them anymore, that's it. They're out the door. Goodbye, ghosting. I can't be your friend. And then there's like no conversation out there. Even when it comes to like business and stuff. Like I've had business deals gone south because I'm like, wait a second. So you, 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 you talked to me for three days straight. You gave me all these numbers. Da, 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 da. And then now all of a sudden, like I come back at you with something a little bit more realistic. And now it's like, oh, well, we can't work with you. And it's like, what? Yeah. How about have a conversation? And how about we... But no, people can't have conversation out there. It's just very like, no, you're you're disgusting. Bye, whatever it is. Like, I, I can't talk to you. I can't be your friend. And it's like so weird. It's not like that out here. What I respect about people like on the East Coast is you always know what you're going to get from people on the East Coast. Very upfront. If someone doesn't like you, they'll still be cordial to you. Like if we got to be at the same gym or something like that, I'm going to just walk past you. In LA, they'll be like, hey, how's it going? Da, da, da. And then as soon as you turn your back, they'll start talking shit about you. Yeah. I'm like, if you don't like me, then why – then why are we friends? Like what they do is this. Because they don't want to lose a follower on Instagram. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So what they'll do is, is like they'll, they like wait on it. Like if you make one mistake, they'll just come at you and like make you the worst absolute human being ever. And it's like, you look at it and like you got to analyze it and you're like, wow, this person was waiting to say these things to me because it was never, it was never a real relationship. It was transactional. It was fake. They were waiting for this moment. We're out here. It's just a little bit different. People don't act like that. If I, if you and I are friends, we've never had an argument, but if you and I are friends, like we're going to hold each other accountable and I'm going to call you out on your shit. And if you do something that's, that irritates me, I'm not going to not be your friend. I've had how many years of friendship with you? Oh my God. We've known each other since at least 2015, 14. Yeah. yeah. Like I've known you for a really long time. And you've told longer. me, and you've told me a lot of shit and have you, has it ever gotten back to you? Never. Yeah. You know, I like, said, I never said anything. You know, like, like I got no reason to. Right. Like. It's just a different level of respect. Like out there, it's just very different. And it's like you you can't you can't operate like that. And it made me change. Like I I really did. Like I started to change myself out there. And now that I've been going this last year, I've had a lot of transitional periods. I'm older now. You know, I I care about different things, and I'm trying to change myself as a person and grow as a woman and and become different. Like you know, I've looked at myself over the years and I've watched myself grow. Because again, I was 16 years old getting into this industry. I watched myself progress from different versions of myself and now I want to become a totally different version it's called growth it doesn't make me fake it doesn't make me anything other than I don't want to be the current the old versions of myself yep. people out there will like almost like shame you for that yeah because it's like oh that that and no, I'm not fake. It's I'm, it's called growth, and I'm growing. I don't I don't I don't want to be that person. It's just very it's very different out there. It's an interesting concept, just uh, all of us hitting different strides now. And you can see the people that are staying stagnant. Mm -hmm. You can see the people that aren't changing. And the energy between you and those people drifts yeah. su substantially. And I always heard stories. My mom has always told me things like that about energy and whatnot. And I've always believed it. I've always seen things and felt that presence when I'm when I'm doing things. And I've always been able to sniff people out way before they're gonna yeah. do me any, any dirty. Yeah. Um, which I've been very fortunate to have that like sixth sense type of a scenario right. go on with me. But you you look at a 10 year, a, a decade, you look at a decade period and you just see the people that are going to actually grow, the people that are stay, like I said, staying the same. And you look at yourself and if you are not you hear him? I'm sorry, Kenji just stood up and took a huge deep breath next right. to me. Are you stressed? It's okay. You're growing, buddy. You're four right. this year. I know. Um, so I'm in a I'm in a very interesting space. And just like you, when I got into the fitness industry, I got into it when I was 20. Let's say 19, 20 years old, I guess, when I got into the fitness industry. I would convince myself that it's totally cool I could live off eating chicken and rice the rest of my life. 
every single day. I could do the step mill every day for an hour. What? Three hours. This is this is like what? And as time progresses, and you start seeing how weeks weeks go by like days. Yeah. Months feel like hours sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it is scary. Yeah. We're in the middle of September right now. I know. I I didn't do shit this summer. I didn't go to the beach. I didn't do anything. I mean, I went on like a couple of trips, but that was it was kind of just a very isolated summer, and it kind of started in March. Ever since COVID, my last episode, I had a, I had a conversation and I said with everybody that listened, and I said, things have felt different since COVID. I can't, yeah. I can't explain it. Yeah. They feel different. And I believe it has a lot to do with asking a lot of questions, overanalyzing things now, wanting to be more healthy, wanting to make money different ways, and, and almost having the veil lifted off of the face, stepping out of the matrix. Right. I know that's like a buzzword I know. now. People I know. hate that. It's I know. like- it's true though. I know. Because the matrix is literally you in the fucking rat race, sitting yeah. in traffic, going to your job, staying at your job all day. And you could be happy doing that. Yeah. There's no shame in that. But you're in the cycle. Pay my taxes, pay the, the, uh, the absorbent amount of, of um, rent and not save anything and just live paycheck to paycheck and not question things and just, right. oh, it's just how things are. It's like, it's not how things are. Things need to be different. Things can be different. We have to just understand that they need to be. And it starts with us. Right. It starts with your own personal development because if you're just going to sit there, smoke the, smoke the fucking bag of weed every single day, put the fucking alcohol back every single day. You're going to have you're going to be numb and you're right. not going to you're not going to ever advance and mature and stagnant. get to the place that you've been in since you went to LA to now. Yeah. And where I've been from believing that I could eat chicken and rice every single day and believing that oh, I could do an hour of cardio on the step mill every single day if this keeps me in shape, but it's a fake facade right. that you believe at that point. Right. And if you don't ever upgrade or you don't ever do the self-development and learn to get out of these ruts exactly. and these cycles and these things, otherwise you're going to be the guys at Bev's, the old guys at Bev's, not the regular guys, the 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 the, the dudes that are like furniture in the place. Those are the dudes that I can't... I I, I love some of them though. I love like, them. But, I love going at that. But I love them. That, but you like can almost. Hour. But you can almost sense the regret. No, for sure. That they've gotten so far into like this is how my life needs to be. Right. And they're almost they're almost realizing like they've they've ostracized themselves and friends and families and right. they've 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 kept isolated and oh I couldn't go to that birthday party I couldn't eat that one half a slice of cake because yeah. it would have fucked my physique up yeah I know and they get in this crazy turn and they never upgraded yeah they never got out of it you see the people that start in the fitness industry versus the people that are still in it right. still trying to fight with the younger ones right it's like yo you should have you should have understood that there was a time and a place for you to make your money make your mark you're done now, dude. Right. You're done now. You have to move on and you have to do something else. Right. But because you never set yourself up to do that, because you never did the personal development, you never took the courses, you never wanted to ask why, what else can I be doing? What more is there to do and, and learn and be a part of in this life, whether this life is real, whether this life is a simulation, whatever it is, how can I be more present in my day-to-day -day versus this is my routine. This is what I do every day. I go to the gym. I I eat. And that's it. I eat my meals and I go to bed. And I do it again and again. And, and there's no life outside of that. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's so It's scary when you think about it, it on is. the other it, side of it. Is, we thought that we could yeah. do that. And luckily we upgraded. Yeah, thank because God. It, because now. Remember us back then? Like, remember when we would sit there and do like cardio? We would go work out. It was like the same type three of. Three hours. Routine. And we had the same coach, you know? So it was like the same facade and like. After a while, like I started to one, I had to be realistic with myself. I wasn't gonna get, I wasn't gonna get my pro card, and if I was, I was gonna have to continue to do things that I didn't want to do. And then at that point, I kept looking to myself, like, how much more can I go? How much more can I do? And like, when you look at it, it's the same thing. Like when you're on Instagram, all these girls look the same, all these oh guys look God. the same. It's the same shit over and over and over again. And like when I did move out to LA, the big difference for me was is that I wanted to do something different. I wanted to make a difference in the fitness industry. I no longer wanted to sit there and post the same ass pictures. I didn't want to start doing the same photo shoots of me in the gym half naked. And then now I even don't want to do half the shit that these girls are doing because I look at it and it's all the same shit. I don't want to do that. I got into the fitness industry years later. When I was a kid, I got into it for all the wrong reasons. I was severely bullied in school. I didn't like myself as a person. I was insecure. I thought that that, that life would fix me. 
it didn't made it worse. Um, now, like when I moved out to LA, I was very fortunate that I found F45, which is my job. And anyone who knows me knows how much I love it. Like I eat, sleep, breathe. I'm up at 4.30 in the morning. I will go teach seven classes a day at 45 downtown Los Angeles. I love you and I love all my clients, <laughs> right? It's like the best thing. And like what I found is it fulfills me much more to make a difference and to actually care about all these different things when it comes to that because – I now want to be a part of someone's story. That's why I got into the fitness industry and that's why I started changing my content. This is why I started changing myself. And not to change myself because I think I'm terrible, but it's like I wanted a different view on fitness. I used to look at it as like a, a sexual thing, something that made me feel good because of the likes and validation. I was posting pictures and getting, I mean, when I used to be a, bigger influencer when I had a bigger following and more engagement and stuff it was for all the wrong reasons I was posting these pictures because I was broken and insecure I had gotten out of a relationship and I needed that for myself I needed the validation I needed to post those things for me now like I said when I moved out to LA and I transitioned more so out of that and it was I got into it because I wanted to help people it changed my life and it fulfills me differently like I wake up and I don't hate going to work. I don't. Like, people are like, how do you do this shit every day? How do you have this amount of energy at 5.30 in the morning? Why? Because I like getting those text messages or I like getting those those tags on Instagram of, like, how I've really changed and impacted and someone's life. And it's fun. And it's fun. It's different. It's, it's different. Not, it's not the same shit. Like, that's why, you know, there's been a lot of people. I mean, I'm down between between going to OG and going to jujitsu. I'm down from, I, I say it every, almost every couple episodes, I'm down from 2.30. I'm, like, 189 now. Yeah. So it's I, different when it's not forced. And I just, I don't have to, I, listen, there, there are plenty of days where I don't feel like getting up and I don't want to work out and I don't want to do things, but uh, I'm in a habit right now. I'm in a, I'm in a ritual of I'm getting my workout in, but it's not like a Bev's workout. It's not like a bodybuilding workout. It's, it's not a, it's not a, oh great. It's leg day again. Or, right. oh, it's just shoulders today. This and that. No, no, no. It's, we're doing like a hit style workout and now yeah. we just an hour and I'm done. You're I'm in, you're fucking out. fucking done. I don't have to stand there all day. And Listen, I love my Bev's people. I really do. The people that I fucked with, I fucked with. Oh, me with. too. Absolutely. I love Bev's. But my Absolutely. issue was like at, at at my height, and it's a very different gym now. Like I go, I've gone there. I haven't gone there besides for like one shoot in the last, I'd say, six months. I haven't. I, I haven't been there. Yeah, I haven't gone there, and it's and it's nothing against Steve. You know, I know you're close with Steve. I love Steve. I love the culture they built there, but it's very different now. There's a lot of new kids, younger kids, and it's the influencer kids. It's, it's that, not. It's, it's, it's not a the, different. It's world. not the Sean Harris's. It's not it's the people that we when we no. were going there, and they were clanging and fucking banging. People and it went was, in there to work. Yes. Like when we were, when we all went Steve to that Steve was gym. training with Dorian there. Yeah. Like Branch yeah. Warren yeah, would yeah, stop yeah. by and just be an animal. These it was a different era. Different. It was a very different era. We were fortunate enough to experience that era of bodybuilding. the other side on the other and side. And now I hate it. I hate it. I do. I hate this new like generation of working out because it's all bullshit. People literally just go to the gym. They film the same goddamn exercise and then they leave. Like it's not actually putting in the grit and the work. The one thing I used to love about going to Bev's every single day when I was a kid, because don't forget, like this was... Back in 2010, 2011, 2012, I remember I would be on the, st the Stairmaster next to Kai Green, and we'd be having full-blown conversations. And it was the coolest thing to me because this was somebody I looked up to. This was somebody I inspired. You know, like, I really loved that era of that bodybuilding and that fitness world because it was just much different. I loved it because I was, like, the teeny bopper kid that, like, everyone just, like, took around. Like, Angelica Nebbia used to take me everywhere. Victor Martinez. Like, everybody, like, they just, they opened up my world to it. But again, as the year started to change, and like this is just this is what happens. Development Bodybuilding and growth. It, it just evolved into something different. When I got out of it, it just wasn't something I wanted to do anymore because it was just it didn't fulfill me as much as it did when I was younger. Yeah. When I was younger, I was something I wanted, but again, it was for all the wrong reasons. I thought it was something I wanted because it was for me, but it was really because I was just broken and insecure and I needed it for my mental state. Now that I don't need that and I don't need the likes and validation and now that I've, again, found F45 and I have a whole different aspect of working out, I felt like I was a little brainwashed when I was younger because I just fell into line. I really thought that doing three hours of cardio a day was the answer to my problems. I thought that doing drugs and steroids was going to make me better, and it didn't. It made me really sick, and then it changed my body, and then it took Which me, in turn changes your mental outlook right, on things and your health. Absolutely, And, like, even, like, my last year of competing and when I switched to figure, like, it was not a secret that I, I, I did steroids, like, you know. You like, talked about it on yeah, the last podcast I, I talked about it on the last you podcast. You were very transparent like, about it. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I look back on it. I don't even like posting those pictures to my Instagram. If you look at my Instagram, there is not a single shred of bodybuilding. You wouldn't even think I was a bodybuilder. 
I don't even like enjoying showing those photos because I don't like that version of me. I don't like how my body was. I don't like how my mental state was. I did not like myself back then. I didn't. I didn't at all. Now, again, I go to F45. You were telling me I could go work out for 45 minutes and burn 600, 700, 800 calories? Yeah. In 45 minutes? Yeah. And I don't have to go every single day. And I get to do a bunch of different things along with it. Like I get to just. And I get to have fun and okay. I get to go be around my clients and I get to jump around and sing and dance and do all these fun things. Like I love it. It has changed my life and it has brought me to a very different side of the fitness industry that I really know and love. But what makes me sad is, is that there's not enough of that. Like I wish that in this era now that there was more of that. Because I look it's at all growing. these dumb, I look at all these dumb kids like now, and I hate to be mean when I say that, but it's like. Not be mean, tell them. It, it's dumb fucking kids. They, they promote the wrong message. Like there's these two twins. Um, I think now they're going to start bodybuilding. They, they're big on YouTube. And listen, I'm not knocking the fact because they make the money. So that I give them all these kids now. They know how to make money off of this shit when it comes to the YouTube, the fitness stuff. Yeah, they, they, they manipulate do a lot it. A lot of lot of buzzwords. A lot of a lot, lot of, of good lighting. Click, but lot of, when you see them yeah. in person, they look like a lot dog of clickbait. A lot, lot of dog shit. A lot of a lot of playing the game to make people right. you know think something's happening. There was actually um, there was a uh, an uh, there was an issue in um, in uh, L. A. with a with one of these influencer kids. That I'll, I'll I'll tell you about. Yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait. I can't wait. I can't uh, wait. It was with Kai. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was recently just like at the 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 Gym Shark LA event recently. Mm -hmm. This was the Gym Shark LA event last year. That's where I was. Oh, okay. So yeah. it was this year. I ju I just went to the Lift LA one. Yeah. Let me tell you, it was a whole different ball. It's game. tough. Everyone's got a camera. Everyone's everyone's vlogging everything. There's nobody's living in the fucking moment. And nobody's. And this working is coming out. from somebody who shoots. Videos. And this is coming from someone that influenced for years. Like I got my Instagram following from from Dexter Jackson, honestly. Love Dexter. Love Dexter. Love Dexter. Um, it was right place, right time. Him and I had been friendly for years at a time. I accidentally got my Instagram following. And it was because it was, I was in Miami at Iron Addicts. It was during the weekend of nationals. And um, it was when uh the mannequin challenge happened. So oh, we really? all did. Yeah, I was shooting with uh, Soraka. I love him. Love everybody. <laughs> um, they're great people down there in that Miami area. Um, so I was shooting in the gym, and they were all like, come on, we're going to do the mannequin challenge. We're all going to come in. And then it was just by accident. Like, I never even, like, tried to get, like, an Instagram following like that. It was really just an accident because I was featured in Dexter's YouTube. And then, like, I got tagged, and then that's how I got my following, which is from that by accident. So I never really set out to do all this. But, like, it's just changed over time. It's brutal. Now it's just a totally different atmosphere. So when I'm at this Gymshark of LA event, like, I'm looking at some people, like, now what I thought was cool, Phil Heath is one of their athletes. I didn't even know yeah. that. Do you know that? Like, there was not a whole big crowd there, like, for that. And he was giving out information. I was nope. sitting there soaking it up like a freaking child in kindergarten, you know? Like, he's giving, like, tips about, like, lifting and working out. And I'm, like, looking around. And I'm, like, how is nobody else intrigued about this? No, they don't care. I had someone, another fitness influencer, come to me and they were, like, who is this guy? I was so insulted. Yeah. I was insulted. I was, like... He's like one of the greatest bodybuilders. No, they want to follow guys like what are those the Trend Brothers? Yes, or oh, that, that, like that's that. who I was talking about. I, I, I'm gonna be, that, I'm gonna that's be who I was coming back to. Be completely honest with you, I don't know who they are, but I've, I've heard, I've seen their names, and I've heard. But that, it. those are the kids I was and just, just going to bring up. And it's no offense to them, I just I can't consume. Me either. But my 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 margin for mindless content is about that big. I can't. I fill it up every day. I, so because it's so small, and it <laughs> there's so much stuff that's just mindless that I that, yeah. that I'm I'm given access to every single day. To start following dudes that are called the Trend Brothers, I just, I can't. That's exactly I who I was literally it. giving the example with, with how the, the industry has changed. Yeah. So they have a YouTube video out right now, and they had just gotten, and this is what I don't like, is they they went from one supplement company that, and this is what I have a problem with with these kids and some adults too, is they get with one company, let's say let's say I'm signed with Rain, and I'm like, every day I'm telling you, Rain is the best, Rain is great, da 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 now another company comes along. Bang. More, more money, yeah. Bang offers me ten dollars more. Can I tell Sorry. you? Sorry. What? Can I tell you? Uh Rain actually bought Bang. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe that's not a good example. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. Well, let's just say that that didn't happen, okay? We're, we're we're still gonna go with my example. Now, because I'm a young kid and because I care about money and I care about likes, validation, and followers, and I don't give a shit about anything else because these people are not getting into fitness because they want to give out good information. They're doing it because they're 
they're doing it for all the wrong reasons. They're not doing it because they are they want to care about people and, and give good pointers and tips. And not right? to interject, but they're also doing it because they don't give a fuck about anybody that follows them. They look at every no. single person as a transaction. Dollar sign. They don't care. So Dollar sign. Dudes that are sitting here telling telling everybody that it's cool to take trend and all this stuff without actually going over what actually might Happens. happen to you if right. you do it. You're influencing all these young kids to take steroids. To take That's drugs. That's fucking scary. And like most of these kids are going to take it and then they're going to go on the black market and buy it and then they're going to inject it and then they're going to do something to themselves and do irre- irreversible damage and to, to their themselves. families right so now let's say bang comes along and bang only offers me like a hundred dollars more extra a month i'm gonna take it yep. that's that's their mentality so these kids so they were so obsessed with one brand that they were using and then within weeks they're, they're now obsessed with another one yep. so now they have this viral video going around of them snorting the pre-workout company that they're that's with right. now, I had, a, now I had a roommate in college that that would ask me for lines of my mr hyde when before he went out to the club i cannot yeah <laughs> I cannot, you know, so it's like now you're promoting the wrong message out there and like you're doing all this dumb shit and then how how they're spinning it is like, this is now the best company that I'm with. And it's like, really? Because three weeks ago you were just saying that the other company that you're with is the best products. So now I have a hard time believing that you even are with this shit. They're not. But unfortunately, a lot of the people can't see past the bullshit. They can't. They don't see the trends. They don't see that they're, you know, it's like the people that got hooked into the shreds era. It's the people that got hooked into that era and that that couldn't see through that bullshit. Oh my god, I I love to talk about that tread. That's era. right. I don't. You I, know, do. I, don't I, I do. I don't. I didn't really partake in any of it. I didn't really understand any of it. You know what I'm saying? So it was almost like I just know that that was the cult following. So the only reason I knew about the logistics of that whole shreds era was because I had a friend that I went to high school with. He ended up getting into the fitness industry and he ended up working for them. And I'm not going to say his name because I would never like, you know, Um, but he was their video, their video, 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 videographer. um, No, no. He he edited all their stuff. Oh, so he was the video editor. Yeah. So now do you remember that whole era with Devin Physique when he got with that? Okay. So this is what they would do. All of those people, Paige. Joey, all of them. Like, and I don't know them from a hole in the wall, so I don't want to judge. I, but met Joe, was, I met Joey at the LA event last year with Kai, and he was super nice. I actually like him and his content that he posts now. I used to think he was but kind just, of a It's douche. interesting that he posts that stuff I now. I know, and years ago he wasn't like that. now people that follow him now, they don't understand what he used to be I know, like. I know, so I know. I didn't really care for him when I was younger because I had met him in person a yeah. couple times because the Shreds thing was a cult because what they did was – they had an uh, a an apartment, house, and it was all content. It was, so it was an apartment building, and all the at they all had to live there, and they all had to literally like it was content. So anyway, so the, what they would do is they would take their pictures, and before they would post it, they would send it to my friend, and then he would have to go in and edit it and to whatever liking that it was, knowing that these people don't look like this and they're not like this, and then he would send it back, and then that's when they would go and post that, that content. Yeah. So that was the only reason I knew what was actually going on, because I remember like I really liked Paige, like I really looked up to her, and he was the one he told me he was like I wouldn't look up to her. He was like she does this, 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 this is how much they spend. All of them, they all collectively get X, Y, and Z in steroids every month. This is what's going on. I knew the logistics and I knew the facts of it because this is someone I went to high school with, you know? Yeah, I've heard I've heard mixed reviews of, about everybody, to, you know. You, you know? You, you, you hear it through the grapevine. You hear things. I mean, just like you are saying currently, because I want to be crystal clear on it, you don't know these people from Holmes. You're no. Not, you're not judging, but no. at, at some point you did feel a certain way and yeah. the, your opinion changed because you find out that it, it's not so much like that. It, it's not. And like, and that's what I ivory have. Ivory tower ain't so ivory. Exactly. And that's the issue that I have now with this generation because I feel like that, that shreds era is now coming back with oh, like yeah. this younger- Bradley Martins and yeah. stuff like that. And now I was watching a back. video with these fo- the fucking Nelk boys. Is that the the, the two? They they're the next hot commodity. I they're I, the they're the new. I watched hot I watched a video with Sneeko, that dude Sneeko, um, that dude that chick Sophia. And yes. the what's the main what's the main dude from the Nelk boys or the the I don't sh- even I. I. I hate to be rude, but like I don't even pay attention. to it. I don't it. pay attention to it either. I just it, see it just because I live out there and like came I hear up on the my, names. It came up on my on my uh, on my explore page. It came up on my timeline, and a lot of people because listen, I'm in and out of talking to girls here and there, and nobody ever captivates my attention for me to even warrant taking them out on a date slash invite them over to my place. Well, how could you when they all look the same and posting the same? They shit look the same. Like they this. act the same. I'm good on it. So, um, so like I safeguard my energy. Uh, that's a very powerful tip for anybody listening. Safeguard your energy. Don't let these energy suckers and vampires come in just because they have a pretty face or whatever. Don't do that shit because you will be miserable and your safe haven will crumble. Anywho, I was watching the video and I'm just watching this and I just, 
I'm like, why are these people fucking famous? Sneeko's okay. He's got good points here and there. You know, he's he's boys with Tate. So, you know, people that are either Tate haters or lovers, yeah. you know, they come in. Nobody can, nobody, nobody's allowed to like be in the middle. I, I think Tate has some good points. I think he's also a dick with a lot of things. It just, no one could sit I'm probably in the one of the only females that likes him. Yeah, I just, I. And I, do you know how many people look at me like that there's something wrong with me because yeah. of that opinion? It's, oh, especially in LA, those girls don't like that. Oh, they're no, like, they don't like that they're shit. They're like, oh, you, see, you're against women and you're not a feminist. No, bitch, yeah. I'm not a feminist. Yeah. I, I like, I listen, I, th- I like I, I'm, women, I'm for but I have female to, empowerment. Right. There's a big difference. I'm not just going to sit here and give females passes. I can't give you guys passes. I can't give myself a pass. We all have to be realistic. Women, this is, no one's going to like this. Sorry, I'm Hit about it. to get it. Hit it. Women do not like a taking accountability for their shit. <sighs> they don't. Oh. I never used to. I'll hear this, right? I never used to like it taking accountability for my bullshit. But as I got older and as I got more realistic and as I started listening to like male influences that that matter to me, um, you know, like I'm very fortunate enough that I have three people that are very close to me that give me like very good male influence. I'm very, very fortunate for that. Sound advice. Right. You know, like someone like Andre Ferguson, George Brown, you know, like those are like my close friends who will always give it to me straight all the time. Andre Ferguson. Andre, we'll give it to you straight. I love him. Yeah. He's one of my close friends. That, he's a good friend. He has always given me my shit straight. George Brown, he has always given me my shit straight. And you know what? Those are two men that I really like, really that whole group, like they have all really changed my life because they've made me like hold my shit accountable. Like they'll look at me and be like, nah, we ain't going with that bullshit. <laughs> That's such an Andre. Nah, we yeah. ain't going with that bullshit, Lindsay. I'm not going to let you run there. That's yeah. not it. You're going to take that accountability. You fucked up. Yeah. So now, like, I've really had to learn a lot in these last couple of years as I'm going through this transitional phase. Like, I need to be a different woman to, to take accountability. When you take accountability as a woman, like, you just go from here to here. Like, if you can really dead straight look at yourself in the mirror and be like, mm, that wasn't cool. I probably fucked up there. I need to re- really do better. Or mm, maybe I'm getting myself into these situations because it's me and how I'm conducting and carrying myself. Because girls love to do this. I don't know why this is happening happening to me yeah okay I used to do that let's hold let's hold me accountable I would get so upset when people would start saying comments about my ass and my body and all this stuff like that and like have all these sexual things to say about me but then when you go used to go to my Instagram page what was it it's uh selling yourself in some ways and how I would spin it was, well, I'm just, I'm in the bodybuilding industry and this is what everybody yep. does. And, industry. and I was young. I I'm was, proud of my progress right. is, is the usual, right. the usual lie. I was young. And I, I, I was but I've, li- I've lied about that too. Yeah. I've lied about that too when I, when I was finally in shape and I would take selfies and I would, I would try to like look in the mirror and get the perfect angle where I had like just enough of an ab popping. Cause I would, besides my show day, I was never like shredded, shredded. So I just, just enough of the ab popping. I'd pop it in there. Hey, look at the progress, this and that. I'm, I'm guilty of it too. But, Male and female. But you, but you, but it. you understand as you get older that it's just not the attention that you want. No, and, it's and, not. And that attention actually breeds more problems in the long run. Absolutely. And it's something that I had to learn a very valuable lesson with. Even like recently I had to learn these lessons of just like things like, listen, I think that people can make mistakes. I think that you can change from things, but you have to be able to take the accountability and to be able to look at yourself, whether you're a male or female, but it happens a lot with females where we just like to think like, no, they're just saying that to because they're just jealous or they're insecure or men are insecure. No, sometimes men are saying things to you because they're trying to look out for your better interest and you have to realize that sometimes. Sometimes men see things before women can see things. And like I used to be very guilty of that too. So it is good to have good male influences of friends, women. Um, but you also have to take that with a grain of salt because if you ever gave some of your guy friends a green light, they will take it and they will they run will. with it. Okay. Because like I definitely Jamal, had to learn that. Like Jamal and I have said on multiple podcasts. Men and women can be friends as long as there is no sexual tension slash right. slash interest. I do believe other. that. I yeah. do believe that. But recently I've had to learn the difference between someone who's being a good male friend and someone that if you did give a green light to, yes. that they would take advantage. Oh, they're there. And again, like- and They're waiting in the de- they're, they're waiting, waiting in the shallows. And they're waiting. Yeah. And I've had to learn that. I've had to learn that, unfortunately, the hard way. Um, 
I, I had to learn that a very hard way recently. So yeah, so it's like you got to just take that with a grain of salt. But I do, I do believe and feel it's how you how you can conduct and carry yourself. Now, like you can change those influences, but I had to really hold myself accountable to really realize. But a lot of women don't want to hold themselves to that level to take a step back and be like, well, why is it that I'm getting this type of energy? Why is it that I'm doing this type of thing? Well, maybe it's it has to do with some of the things that you're posting, saying, and conducting yourself again. And if you don't like that, you have the ability to change that. Yes. So what I started doing was is I started changing the type of content that I posted. I don't have really any half naked like gym photo shoots in there anymore. Like I don't I don't have them. I don't take them. I don't do them. Now I try and do like again, I try and change it from having more males as my followers to more women where I'm producing good content because I want to change the fitness industry. I want to be You want able, to empower women the right way, right. not with some fake veil exactly. of feminism. Exactly. So instead of promoting like, oh, go get your body done, go do this, da, 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 I'm promoting like, hey, take the time to build yourself, build your body. Like right now, like I, I'm trying to get my glute specialist certification so then I can now talk about more in depth of like how to actually build your glutes without being like, go pick up a booty band and then you're just going to go do this and it and work on your booty and, right I don't want to be that type of person I want to produce informational content to women so they can change and develop themselves to become better because I'm trying to grow and become better so becoming a real asset in the fitness industry right not, not just somebody that's just going to be an ass right Exactly. And that's, and that was the thing is like, I couldn't understand why I was getting this negative attention or negative energy, but I really had to take a step back for a little bit and take a, take a look at myself. People are creepy. People are fucking creepy. Yeah. Really grade a creepy. I don't think, they'll take kindness I don't think, for weakness. Oh yeah. They do, I, I don't and think they most women understand that either. No. I mean, they really don't. I, I've had, I've had exes, some of it, you know, I've had exes that play the naive game and wouldn't take accountability and like you said, men see things in certain situations a couple of steps ahead because we live in a male body. Right. So we get it. Yeah. You know, some girls think that they understand what goes through every single guy's head and they don't. And, yeah. And 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 there's a lot of dudes out there. I mean, I've never I've never been somebody, you know, and some dudes will laugh, I would like push brush me off and say, I'm just saying this. I've never been somebody to like hit on everybody. I just, yeah. I, I've never I known you to be that way. I just, uh, nobody. And I you've mean, always had a relatively a decent amount of girlfriends. Yeah. Here and there. I mean, I haven't, I haven't been in a relationship since 20. Like, I mean like friends that are girls. Yeah. Oh yeah. Without question. Because, and generally, I mean, maybe one or two that I've actually had an attraction to that if given the opportunity, maybe, but generally I'm just, I don't, I can't stay friends because of a number of reasons. Number one is if I see them with somebody else and I have feelings for them, I'm going to feel fucked up. And then that's also not cool to, be preying on you know on a chick that's yeah. with a guy. Yeah. Mad disrespectful, not only to her if you're her friend, but to the guy. I've always been more than respect. If I know it's like someone's fucking with somebody's in life, I I really I just I don't want to be bothered. There are, there are dudes and people that will intentionally go after people that are married, people that are in deep relationships because they almost want to see if they can break through. Nah, bro. They is, even go after the girls like after they're done out of a relationship. Immediately after a relationship. Immediately. Like waiting for those pictures to get taken down so they can start sending DMs and shit like that. I every single anytime that there's like a potential interest nowadays, like if somebody says, "Oh, this girl is really cute," this and that, I go, "She in a relationship?" Well, yeah, then I don't care. I right. don't want to deal with it. Right. What? So then I can start trying to talk to her. Maybe she's not happy with her guy, and then they break up, and now I got buddy who's mad at me when realistically he has to be mad at her because she gave the attention to me. Nah, dude, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not playing these games. I'm First off, I'm too old. Second off, I never liked them when I was younger either. I don't like that fake shit. Right. And and guess what? If she did it to you like that, like like to, if she did it to him, she's going to do it again. Yeah. So she's going to do it to you again. Always. And I think, you know, I could I could speak for myself. I think where women go when we're naive is because we think that it's because of what we can control. And because if we're not giving the green light, then we're okay. For me, I've always been in the fitness industry. So it's more of a male dominant industry. So I think because I saw the way that how girls were in the fitness industry it was like a nightmare for me I was like I don't want to be friends with these girls because they'll be nice to me and then the second we have to compete against each other then they're not my friend and like then I'm like it's not genuine or they're talking about me because I look better than them for this one show or they look better than me and now I'm talking about them and then it's like a constant competition within the bodybuilding industry when you're going up against these girls and when you're friends with these girls that's why like they you know back then you especially at Bev's. All these girls, they were all butt buddies and stuff. And then when it came down to the competitions and shows, it really showed their ass and their true colors like towards you, you know, like that's, that's how it is. Like in that competitive bodybuilding aspect, it's, 
it's very vain. And like, you really just like start comparing yourself apples to oranges. Like when I first got into the industry, it was all forums. So you couldn't really compare. You didn't know who was competing until that day. Now they put out the list like a week before. And then like, now you're, you're going on these girls' Instagrams and you're like, fuck, she look at her waist. Fuck, look at her butt. Like, fuck, look at, she, I don't look as good as her. And you really start to think. So that's when girls like start going against each other. That's when they all start getting petty. and ca- So I think for me, like as I was younger, because I was like more of like a tomboy within the fitness industry, like I naturally like had more guy influences, right? But like you got to be careful of that because it's like I said before, they'll they'll give you that green, like once you give that green light, they will take advantage of that like this, oh, yeah, you will. know? So it's like you really got to be careful at navigating with that. Um, so I can only speak for myself when I say this, but it's like I kind of viewed it as, and now when I look back on it, it is naive. I would be like, well, I can control what I can control. Okay, that's great. But it's also like you got to be realistic with yourself. I can't always act like that. Just because I can control it doesn't mean that I need to be around these types of people. That doesn't mean I need to have a million male friends. It doesn't mean that I need to have all these different things. Yeah. Got to take it for what it is. Yeah. A lot of, I, I find that a lot of women, and I may get some hate on this, but a lot of women that I see, especially in the fitness industry and you know through social media that get a lot of male attention uh, because it's not that hard for you know even the most lower – average type of chick to get a lot of attention i mean it's crazy what you see dudes dudes while out on these social sites it's oh my god i can only imagine what i just started i just started turning my comments off it's weird it's fucking weird dudes are just straight up weird some of these guys like like they've never seen a girl before it's it's very strange behavior but anyway um a lot of these girls will just they'll look at this like well look how many dudes are lusting over me it's like okay well there you go they're lusting over you. They they want you, but are they gonna be real men? Are they gonna wife you up? Right. Give you a family, support you. No, 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 no. These are dudes that are just trying to have sex with you. You have right. to, there's a big difference. Right. Like between just being a, a fuck buddy for somebody right. and then they when they find the next one, they ditch you to getting that ring. Right. So there's a big, big difference. Like women gatekeep the sex, men gatekeep the relationships. Like we have there are things that each sex has yeah. an advantage in, and you have to understand these things. So I just, I find that these girls, they get into this rhythm of just like, all these dudes that want them, all these dudes that want them, and they give it up, they give it up, they give it up, and then they're they're just like, well, uh, what am I, I'm not, I'm single? It's not, yeah. yeah, because you just kept doing shit. Right. You gotta you gotta take these dudes seriously. Right. Use no, it as sure. a job interview. Make dudes wait. Like, I, I I like it when a girl makes me wait. I, I get excited over that shit. Yeah. First of all, she doesn't have all ass pictures on Instagram, so I, I like know what she looks like generally, but I don't know. It's not like, it, my mom says it all the time, nothing is like, nothing is exciting anymore. Nothing right. is, you know, you, you basically know what she looks like naked. I... <laughs> Yeah. That was like an exciting and well, part. And, and listen, like like I said, I, I was guilty of it too. And to each his own. Whatever you want to post out there is what you want to post. For myself, I know that like I want to I want to grow and I want to be a little this bit different. This is what I'm saying. This is your- I also want to be hit, taken se- more seriously. This is you hitting those strides. Yeah. I also want to be just more taken seriously because I know I'm a good trainer. I know that I produce good content. I know that like I really, my heart is in the fitness industry to change and develop women because I have been a broken and insecure woman and I've had a lot of women change my life. Um, and I'm, and I'm grateful for that. And I want to be able to do the same thing because the girls and the clients that I have now versus the girls and the clients I used to have when I lived here in Long Island is very different. Like now it's, thank you for being a good influence in my life. Thank you for showing me that I don't have to go get my body done. Thank you for showing me that like your energy, your, your passion, like you actually really care about all of us. And giving them the lessons that you wish you knew at their age. I wish. That's the other part. I really did. The other did. part is passing this knowledge down and just being hey, transparent. Yeah. That's what this is. Or listen, not even just being so hard listen, on yourself. That's what this is. Yeah. Th- there's no fucking shocker. Yeah. That's what this is. I've said it since day one. I love having good conversations with people of all walks of life. But really what this is, is everybody that listens to this needs to take bits and pieces and understand different walks and paths of life yeah. and how you have to navigate it. Because what is a business coach? A business coach is somebody that did it before you that you're trying to cut a couple of steps right. and get to their position quicker. Right. That's what this is. Right. Take, you have to take this information that you get from different Absolutely. people and you have to go, oh shit, well, if I act like this on social media, I'm going to get X attention. Well, I don't want that. I don't want exactly. that type of attention. So then maybe I just have to- Accountability. I take have to, accountability for yourself. I have Again, to I-, I I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn we, the hard but way. But you know what? Most people do. The issue is most people do. And and even when we were younger and we get lessons from our parents and they tell us things, oh, you're gonna you're gonna miss high school one day. No, no. I'm not. 
It's like, oh, well, I mean, you know, besides the bullying and besides all the bullshit that you had to deal with, simpler times. It does seem a little nice now that you look back on yeah. it a little bit. So we we do take things for granted in the given moment. But as the years go by, you look at it, you go, oh, those lessons were real. Like I'm starting to understand yeah. it. So opening people's eyes is a huge portion for real content. I mean, listen, how fucking tired, how tired oh, on a scale of one to tired, how tired are you of just seeing the same mindless bullshit over and, and over, over and over, over again. again. It's just like, it's the same conversations, the same low vibrational posts, the same just, okay, we get it, bro. Like That's why in LA, like I, I stopped going to a lot of these events because it's like, this is what it is, okay? This is the number one thing that bothers me is that it is seriously all about your, your followers. No one gives a shit about your personality out there. So when I get invited to these events, do you want to know what I have to do? What do you have to do? So after I get the invitation and they have to be sent to you personally, then when you- Are they doing snail mail? Are they sending it to you? No, like, like they're mail? sending it to you through email okay. and they're saying like, this is the event, da, da, da. And so when you're going to register so that you would like to go to this event, then the, the third question underneath what is your name is how many followers do you have on oh, Instagram? Oh, man. How many followers do you have on Instagram? Because it's a circle jerk. That's what it is. They want to make sure that you're no. going to bring the awareness. So, right. So what it is is that they pick and choose the the people that they want at these events based upon your following because they know the content that you're going to post, how you're going to highlight them. Now, listen, for, for brands and businesses, it is kind of smart because if you know that you have like all this influence there, it'll produce – but these are events that like people are just going there to ask kiss, whatever. Some of them are not beneficial. Some of them are beneficial. I've been to a lot of events that have been very beneficial because it is these big companies putting thousands of dollars into these events, knowing that they're going to have the right people there. And I like those events because then you get to actually network and meet other people because they're more elegant, they're business oriented. But when you're just going to some of these events and like you're meeting like all these influencers, the conversation is so stale to me. And in the beginning, I loved, I loved it when I lived in LA because I, I needed it. I needed that to feed my soul. I thought that like if I had a million followers, I was going to make it in life. I thought if I was hanging out with all these people, I was going to be cool. I was going to do this. Things would be different. Things would be different. But then once I actually got to know these people as people because, again, the internet version of half these people is great. They all are they're the nicest, they're the greatest, they're cool, they're this. And then when you meet them in person, they're the biggest assholes ever. Cool personalities. Right. It is so crazy. And then, like, I really look and I'm like, do I even really want to be friends with these people? Because all it is is about, like, how many – so when you go to certain events – so how many followers do you have? I don't know, like 65,000 oh, on TikTok? Oh. And I'm like – is that not enough? I don't know. Is yeah. that not? Like that is all they care about. And then it's like they only want to be friends with the people who have like around the same as them. Because they're using it as a leverage maneuver. They're using it as a way that they're going to do cross promotional content with these people, leverage their that person's network to then get followers to their own. It's a lot of the podcast game. That's really what it is. A lot of the podcast game. Listen, if I just sat here and I only spoke to people that had crazy followings, would this podcast grow much quicker. Probably. Yeah. But I don't want to have those conversations. Right. I don't care. I don't want to sit there and what have- What can you talk about? Exactly. I don't want to, like, this is unscripted. This whole conversation we've had is unscripted. I have notes and topics potentially that we want to get to. I don't know, maybe we touched on one. I have, I have a fucking list. We've touched on maybe yeah. one. And when I, I said aliens and we moved on to like crazy other things, that this, these, these are what I want. this is what I want to do. Yeah. It's organic. It's real. I'm so tired of the mainstream media. I'm so tired of these fake fucking influencers, these people on social media, YouTube, all of these different channels that they have dual personalities. They act like this grandiose, amazing person when they're behind the camera and they get to talk to people and their audio format and all this stuff. And they have teams that pump out all this content, but they are a shit stain on yeah. the sidewalk of a human being. And that is not the person that we need to be bigging up right. and putting on a pedestal. Right. The fucking Kardashians, all these fucking people. Like, it's just, it, it's a mind fucking numbing situation right. because the dumb people that act the most outlandish for the shock value of things, they get the spotlight. Right. But guess what? I'm totally cool with doing things slower. Yeah. I'm totally cool with growing at a regular pace. I'm totally cool grabbing a fucking no name. You know what I mean? Fucking people that have like no followings that I've had on the podcast, but I've had great conversations with them. Right. So I don't give a fuck. Right. I don't care if they have a thousand followers. I don't right. care if they have two. Right. It doesn't matter to me. Right. It's and a I'm good slowly, combo and it's right. transparent. Right. That's what and I need. And it makes it realistic. And you know, again, now that I'm like seeing things for what it is and I'm like, again, 
holding myself, looking myself in the mirror and thinking like, all right, I got to do some work on myself to think like, why, why was I moving and operating like that? And it was really because I wanted to be around these people so bad because I thought it was going to be beneficial to me. And I started to lose myself and lose sight of that. And like now I don't even care about any of that stuff. I post my content for myself. And because again, I'm trying to produce things that are going to make a difference for people. Like I like that people were like, oh, I didn't know how to do an upright row like that. Or, oh, I didn't know how to, how to, how to grow my glutes in that way. You mean to tell me I could just turn my heels and toes out and hit a totally different part of my glute doing the same exercise? Like, I like being able to do that. That helps people. Or like at F45, I like to post like the, the next day's workout. So then all my clients are like, oh my God, this is what we have to do tomorrow. Like I like posting But they still those, show up. Right. I still liking, I like posting those like, po like tips and pointers for people, like little things, like when you're doing a deadlift, making sure that you're looking down at the ground so you're not straining your neck like this. Like just little things like that that make a world of a difference. Things that I wish I knew then that I know now, like yep. being within the industry for the last 13 years. I got in in 2010 was when I did my first bodybuilding show. So 13 years that I've been here doing this and like now I'm really – starting to be more secure with myself as a person and not giving a shit like, oh, if I post this content, am I only going to get 200 views or am I going to get 20,000 views? Like, it's, you have it's to weird. get out of that. It's weird. I care, but I'd really, I, 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 I care because you've been programmed to care right. about that for the little dopamine hits. Right. So you see a video. I mean, the last couple of posts I've done on Instagram, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 likes maybe. It's like, oh, that sucks. But at the same time, it's like, I don't care. I'm just posting my shit because guess what? No one is going to put, it, no one's going to put my stuff out or support my content the way that I do. Right. And guess what? When I see, and I've said this multiple podcasts, when I see the, the list of people that like a Kardashian, and I keep bringing them up because they're just the most relevant easy yeah, how to bring up. But when I see a list of people that like the Kardashians shit, every mindless, numb, fucking stupid post that that family posts of the same bullshit. When I they, blocked them. When they, I don't even know them, but I have them all I would blocked. love that. I, I, should, I, I gotta, know, I really did. Like, I yeah. blocked every single one I of them. I gotta do that. I gotta do that because I just don't want to see any of the bullshit because, you know, social media and all the accounts, the all the people, they'll algorithm. continually recommend them and I don't want to see them. I don't want to see anybody that looks like them or acts like them. But anyway, you'll you'll see a list of people that support that. And it's just like, wow, okay. You know, but when I blow up and the podcast gets huge and I'm dealing with people that are on a, a much bigger scale, they'll be like, oh shit, I was supporting Nick from day one. Yeah. Were you? Were you? Nah, you weren't. It's okay. You could pretend. Yeah. You could you could tell people you know me. It's okay. I'm okay with that. And it's not an, it's not an ego thing. It's just yeah. like a you could tell people you were fucking with me from day one. Yeah. But you weren't. You didn't listen to any of my podcasts. I have friends that have started, and there's nothing against them personally, but they start podcasts. They do, and Tyler and I have have have, uh, have dealt with this with people that we know. Uh, they start their own podcast, but when Tyler and I had our podcast, they didn't fuck with it. Right. They didn't support it. They didn't share it. They didn't like any of our content. They didn't like any of our posts. So then when they come to us and they ask, yo, did you check our last episode? No. We literally go, did you check out Brajol Brothers? And they go, oh, well, it's not like that. N no, it is. Yeah. It is like that. It is. Because, you know, we fucks with people that we fuck with. Like, that's our people. Like, if you're not going to support us like that, I, I can't give it back, man. I'm not fake. I, I can't yeah. give it back. So it's like, you have to watch this shit and, and you have to just, you have to understand that, you know, the... the you got to stay true to you. That's Absolutely. really what it is. That's yeah. the, if there's one tip I can give and, and one tip that I have to just con consistently live by, it's that I will not be affected and I will not be transformed by these outsourced sources, uh, outside sources. Yeah. These, these people that are in Hollywood or these influencers or these, like these fucking jerk off YouTube kids that act like they're the shit and, and, and they're really just jerking each other off and having dick measure in contests And they're really the around. worst people in person. Yeah, and like, I don't They wanna, really are. I don't they be really, them. they perceive themselves to be so great on the internet and then in person like they really are like shitty people I don't want to be around that, them at I all. don't and I don't either and I think that's what really like in this last like year and a half two years now I would say a lot has happened to me in the last like six months because one I was off social media for a long time like and I'm jealous and envious I of really that. was like I was really proud of myself because again I've been in this influencer whelm since 2012 when I got my following so for me to be off the internet from January till August I deactivated my Instagram and I was the happiest that I was because again about that 11 years on I know 11, 11 years. years on an app and like now I really because again I was losing myself I felt like I was losing friendships I was I didn't recognize the person I was in January I realized I, was like, I need to get the fuck off of this app and I need to just reevaluate who am I? Who is Lindsay? Who is Lindsay without bodybuilding? Who is Lindsay in the fitness industry? Who do I want to be? Who do I want to become? Because I don't feel fulfilled right now. So for my best advice is like post the things that you like for yourself. 
stop caring about everybody else because I started to care about everybody else and I allowed everybody to dictate and tell me who I was. I allowed all these opinions of people to gaslight me and to make me feel like I was less than when like I'm not. And like I had to really take that six month period to figure out who the fuck am I? And again, like it took me coming back to New York. It took me like dating different people. It took me like to, to, to really change my outlook and perception of to understand that I have to hold myself accountable for the things that I, that I've done and the things that I can control right for myself, but I can't allow everybody else to get into my head to tell me who I am just because of their opinion of me based upon one mistake or one thing that I've done or something that just doesn't fit their fucking narrative. I have to be stronger to know mentally who the fuck I am. And then that produces like within like social media, because once you're confident in who you are, there will never be the person that could tell you otherwise. Yep. So that's like where I'm at now is like, I had to get myself out of this hole that I've been in for the last like six, seven months since January to just really remember who I am and that I'm a good person. I do good things and that I'm in it for the right reasons. And once you can do that and once you can start posting for you and not giving a fuck about all these other people, that's when you'll be successful mentally, emotionally, and physically. That's it. Yeah. I see I see the reels all the time, you know, because they obviously promote things to you through the algorithm that you're interested in. They take your search history logs and whatnot and all this different stuff. I see a lot of other videographers. I see a lot of other content creators. And it's just dudes that are just really having dick measuring contests with everybody. Number one, I mean, and then they all look the same. Every videographer I look at now, they all look the same. They shoot the same way. They use the same LUTs, which is just a color. It's a lookup table. It's the same coloring on their videos. They all use the same camera. Nobody's original anymore. No. They all fall into the cookie cutter piece. And listen, it works for a lot of them. They get a lot of views. They get a lot of likes. I, don't, I can't get behind that. I've always, I've always prided myself that, you know, am I the best videographer in the world? Absolutely not. Am I the worst? Nowhere near it. But- I've always prided myself that I've I've consistently kept to like the way that I like to shoot. Right. The different effects that I like to use. I mean, every person uses the same shit in the fitness industry. It is exhausting. Every guy's content looks the same. Everybody's content. Everybody's. Look at all the girls out there too. Like, and look at the guys. Like, if I see one more. <laughs> Oh my God, the only exercise that you need to do to grow your butt is a hip thrust. Oh, hip thrust this, hip thrust that. I'm probably the only female that hates that exercise. I fucking hate hip thrust. When I, I see that it. on the workout. I do them every once in a while. No, but like, I don't, I, that's not the only exercise that I do to grow my glutes. And, and people every are like, single time I have to pee and it's just pushing on my bladder. Pushing. I just don't. So for me, like it hurt my, it, like it took me a long time to learn how to properly do them because uh, how I learned how to properly do it is from this guy, Brett. He's like the the glute guru. I love his content. See the cat down in Florida? No. No, no, no. He's in, um, no, you're you're thinking of somebody else. I know who you're thinking yeah, about, but I no, no, the, that's the university guy. Yes, yes, Squad yeah, no, University. No, no. Brett is from California. And he he wrote like the most amazing books. He trains the most amazing women. And he really, really knows his shit. So he's the person who taught me how to do hip thrust. Not personally, but like through his books. I have I have several uh, copies of his book. So um, I learned that way. But there are just so many different compound exercises that you could do that will actually grow your glutes in a different way. But if you look on Instagram, every chick that has glutes or can pose to show that she has glutes... It, all they do is talk about hip thrusts and booty bands. Well, it's an easy way to hit I'm the TikTok it. shop. So I'm over they it. They want to make sure that they uh, get their sale and their commish. Right. Yeah. That's the problem is that's what keep people care about. They only care about the dollar sign. They don't care about the actual people. Like when the, when girls like Summer Rae were like selling programs. Yo, I saw her at the LA Fit Expo like probably when I went that year in 2018. I walked right. This isn't like a flex. This isn't me trying to say I'm I'm too good or anything like that. I knew that she was going to be at the booth next to me at some point during the day. And I was like, I, I'm just very interested. She was a bang. I'm very interested. No, it wasn't a bang. It was some other company. But I'm like, I'm very interested to see what she looks like in person. I must have walked past her four times. And I, she was there the whole time. I'm like, what? She's been there the whole fucking time? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I did a side by side with her. I had, I, had a, I had a picture. Like, How'd that go? It was great. Okay. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. I even had a, I even took a photo of her next to this girl that I was uh, friendly with because this girl had huge glutes. Like this girl, 
her glutes to this day are amazing. And the comparison was just so crazy. But what bothers me is that someone like Summer will make so much money off of a glute program that she didn't even construct and build. Of course she didn't. Of course she she didn't. didn't even construct or build it. That was like Gunther getting fucked oh, over years yes, and years I ago. We're not going to say the girl's name, but we're not. yeah, that was Gunther getting fucked over. I remember that because I, I remember that that happened. I hated he, that. I hated that too because yeah. he constructed that beautiful program. Entire program. He and did that shit start she, to finish and she, she, claimed that. she bought it from him. She purchased it and she took every she single thing. She blocked me too. I was thing. like, why'd you block me? I, I she blocked even, me too. Like, why the fuck she I blocked me. I remember that girl yeah. blocked me too. Yep. I was like, I didn't fucking do anything. I and remember. I, her, actually, it's ironic. Her video, one of her videos actually just came up on my TikTok the other day. I was like, why do I know? What, why does this chick look familiar? And she's got the same face, but very different. Because oh, she's yeah, got so much work done. Yeah, she's it is got a very lot of work done. Very scary. Yeah. I was like, wow, you're just still out here just fooling people. Huh? And she's a liar. She was a big liar. Like, listen, she has a beautiful body and she's a beautiful girl. I, I thought she was always yeah, very pretty. She was, she, she, was a, she was a pretty girl. Yeah, very very like, good looking. And she was just one of those girls that had no knowledge of actual fitness behind it. And she just cookie cuttered everybody else's bullshit and then sold it. And because she was who she was, she made all that money. That's what bothers me about the industry. And like, that's where like the perception of like, maybe I'm a girl hater, but it's not. I'm realistic. What bothers me is that you're lying. So you're telling these girls that they can look like you. Meanwhile, you know that you didn't touch that program not one time. You didn't even make the program. You paid somebody else and took their program and hard work and then slapped your logo and put your name on yep. it. You didn't even try out the program without to any, know what it works on. Without any credit to the other person. No, not at all. You literally just blocked them. You could have even put in conjunction with so-and-so. But why would they give them any publicity? Why would they bring them any clout? They didn't even follower? think that they would find out. No. Idiot. Of course not. She was such a moron. I had no respect for her. But I, don't like, respect, I don't have respect for people like that. Me and I don't want to deal with people like me that. Either. I don't want them on my podcast. Like when we go back, we go back once again to the point of could I grow exponentially if I had large, large names? Listen, do I get do I get a couple of like maybe fifty uh, subscribers every time Dre's on the podcast? Without question. But I also, if you notice, like Dre hits me up and he's like, "Yo, can I come on and shoot it?" I don't, I don't use people like I'm not here to leverage people's followings. Right. Is that the smart way to do it? Yeah, but it's also very manipulative, and I right. don't like doing that. I want to have, and Dre's a friend of mine. I'm talking about other people that have big followings. I want to have genuine interactions with people. If I have, let's say that girl. If I have her on, even with her huge following, will I get some subscribers out of it? Without question. Will I get Absolutely. will I get a couple, you know, thousand, hundred thousand views pro on, on some clips? Probably. But at the same time, I can't fake the interaction for two hours, three right. hours. I can't do it. I, no. ca I can't pretend to be invested in this person when I don't give a fuck because I know that they're a liar, they're a snake, and they're a wolf in sheep's clothing. You're in it to benefit and and fatten your pockets. Listen, it's capitalism. We're all trying to make money. I'm trying to get hey. this to a point where I can make money on this. But I'm also not misleading people and giving them information that's going to maybe hurt them or not give them the full transparent picture. Anybody that's followed me, they know that I fucked with Rain since day one. Right. Before I had a contract with Rain to shoot videos for them. Always loved Rain. I really did. I always, I always, I used to get the Carnival candy. Fat. Love that flavor. Very upset that they that they got rid of it. Jeff, if you're watching this, motherfucker. I bring it back. Yo, bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back, yo, Braden. Come on, guys. So it's like it's it, it's I'm I'm always gonna pitch people and things that I trust and that I really fucks with. Like people all the time. I'm hurt. I'm this. I'm that. Go to my boy Scott. Oh, you need it. You need an adjustment. Go to Darlin. Like I have my people and I fucks with my people. I'm not somebody that's like, oh, well, this PT is going to start giving me a kickback if I send people to him yeah. with the podcast. So I'm going to start using him. No, that's not how we do this. I, I promote people that I actually support and people that I care about. I have a huge network. I, I know I have a person for everything, you know? I am a so, very- It's also the New Yorker. You know? I know, it is, it is, it I is. Got, I got I know. Got, well, because I, listen, I, listen, I, I would be lying if I said that I don't like to move and operate a certain way. I do. I like to have respect when I walk into a room. I don't want people to look at me with any other way other than that they respect me. Um, I think that respect is earned. It's not given. And I think that I have been in the industry for 13 years and I've really proven myself to have a respectful name. Not everyone could just talk about me and say these horrible things about me. 90% of the time, people have nothing but really good things to say about me. The 10%, fuck y'all. There's, there's always a 10%. There's always a 10%. There's 10 for me too. And that's too. because they've had it, poor encounters with me. Maybe I wasn't my best self back then. I don't give a fuck what it was. Hope y'all enjoy my pink, my pink glute hat. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm dead. I just noticed that. I Because it's been backwards all the time. I, I'm a peach emoji hat. I just noticed that. Tyler hated on this peach emoji hat. Hated on it. He was talking mad shit about my peach emoji hat. Stupid. Bah, 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 bah. We went to Nashville. Every girl walking by. Oh my God, I love the hat. I go like this. I go, you hear that, Tyler? They love the hat. They love the He's hat. He's like, shut Tyler. up. Nick. Shut up. So yeah. You know, like, so I have... Predominantly, I have 90% of the people within the fitness industry have nothing but great things to say about me. They have a respect for me. A lot of them have known me as a kid. I do like to enter a room and conduct and move a certain way. I like to have a network of people that I can know and trust so that I always have a person for somebody. That second part was super key. Trust. Right. So, like, I have a person for everything. I have a chiropractor. I have this, that. When I like you as a person and when I trust you in your craft and whatever it is, I will be the most loyal human being to you. I will promote you. I will do whatever. I don't care if you're famous. I don't care if you have 10 people that follow you. I don't care whatever it is. You know, like um, the woman, Heather, who does my eyelashes. I love her so much. She's so great. She is so good at what she does. I will promote her to every single person who compliments my lashes, whether she's been doing lashes for 10 years or uh, 10 months, whatever it is that she does. I love her so much. So I will always go out of my way to go and promote whatever it is. Like a second someone's like, I love your lashes. Oh my God, this girl Heather does my lashes. Da, 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 da. Like that's just who I am as a person. So once I find somebody that I like and that I trust and build a rapport with, I will always make sure that I put your name out there. Or like when people will say like, hey, do you have a, yeah, hold on one second. Yeah. Here's their number. Here, I shared it to you. Please hit them up. Let them know you're my friend. You know, they'll Tell them that Lindsay sent me. And it's not because I expect anything like that. I don't expect things from people. I do things out of the kindness of my heart with no expectation in return. That's it. Because I used to live my life in a very like, oh, but I was so nice to this person and I, they should be nice back to me. Not everybody's going to be nice to you just because you're a good person. Nope. Not going to be that way. You have to be very realistic with yourself. You have to do things out of the kindness of your heart with no expectation in return. Otherwise, you'll always be disappointed. And I was always, always disappointed. disappointed. Growing up, I was always disappointed. Like, oh, but I did this. Like, you remember, like, there were girls that in the fitness industry that I put on so much. We're definitely not going to mention one person's name. Nope. Put them on so much. Gave them my entire network. Gave them companies that I was signed with to get them signed with them, to travel with them, to do all these different things. Wolf in sheep's clothing. And they have all screwed me over. I used to take it to personal. I used to take it to heart that these people would do these things to me. Now. Another one bites the dust. Yeah. My mom's favorite, my mom's famous quote with me that I always remember and I'll always, always sticks out in my head. I, I always tell people thumbprints, thumbprints of uh, things that have been said to you over the years that just always will stick to you on your brain. It's a thumbprint on your brain. My mom had always said that you can't get mad for thinking that people think the same way as you. Yeah. And that's the unfortunate truth. And that so is it's the like, truth. You know, you can get mad at people for doing X, X, Y, Z. You can feel upset about it. You can feel slighted, whatever. They don't have the same moral code as you. They don't care. Right. They don't care the same way that you do. And unfortunately, that's a, a character blemish for themselves, not on you, but you have to not take it personally then, which is a learning experience all on its own. Yeah, and it's a whole growth, and, it, and, it's, and it's a thing. And especially, like, within the fitness industry, it probably happens in every industry, but we only really know predominant fitness is just, like, people will take advantage of you, and, you, and, and you'll put people on to things, and then they'll take it and run with it and then just be like, who are you? I don't give free game to anybody anymore. I give, neither, neither do I. There's a lot of people. Neither do I anymore. There's a lot of people that ask me for free game all the time, especially on the podcasting side. I, I don't think, I don't think people understand when they hit me up and they ask me, "Hey Nick, I'm thinking of starting a podcast. You know, can you give me some tips?" Or I, I have a question about X, Y, Z. I, I don't think they understand how much research and how much trial and error yeah. has gone into what I do with this show and this type of format and the equipment that I've purchased and I've decided on using over the years. It is, it is a very tried and tested type of a, a formula that I've had to put out. Right. And for me to sit here and give you all that free game, I mean, not even a, not even a hey, Nick, I'll throw you X for helping me out. Yeah. No. So I've, I've told people, I've had a couple people that recently hit me up and it was no offense to them. I love them so much and they know they're going to hear this and they're going to think about it. I just said, yo, I got to be so real with you, dude. I get this question like four or five times a week. People asking me, how do I do this? What should I buy? Blah, blah, blah. I said, I will give you a little bit of information. You have to do the rest. Yeah. I cannot 
do all of it for you. Right. Especially number one, if I'm not getting paid for my time and it's right. nothing against you, but I am right. doing that. For and that's how the much thing because time done. is money. And like and your and your time is worth yeah. it. Now and a, I will, and a three minute conversation turns into an hour right. very quickly. And because you also have to watch out for the vultures of people. Yes. Cause like you have to watch out for the people who are gonna take your kindness of you ha- trying to help them and they're gonna run with it. Yeah, which now, which I've dealt with that in the video side of things, more so than podcasting. Oh, for sure. I've dealt for with sure. that on the video side of things, which is why unless it's a videographer that I really fuck with and I really trust. There, there are a group of guys that listen to the cast that fuck with me that they know if they hit me up, they got questions. Right. They you'll you'll ask help me, out. Hey, Nick, what would you price this at? Or Nick, I need a question for this. We're cool. It's almost like our little group. Right. I got and you. you'll help them out. Because but there are people that have taken that shit. And, and run then, with it. And then hit up people that I work with trying years ago, trying to no, steal clients from me. And I had to then I have that. a conversation with them and go, if you really want to play this game, I am the most petty motherfucker you've ever met. Don't don't think that I'm like this amazingly nice guy. I am. Right. 99% of the time. But if you give me that little 1%, I will fucking burn this whole thing yeah. to the ground. Trust me. Because I also, I also believe in this. I have had so many people in my life help me out in the fitness industry, in life, advice, da, da, da. Because I recently was just told by one of those women that I met in Portugal is that the best, the best thing that I learned was this piece of advice that she gave me. You should always be friends with all walks of life. People who are older than you, people who are the same age as you, and people who are younger than you. Because they're all going to give you different type of insight. They're going to help you grow. Some are going to help you and see different sides of the, the world and see different things in life but they're all going to be a different progression of helping you become a better version of yourself. So you should always be friends with people who are older than you, younger than you, and the same age as you because they're all going to give you a different type of insight. And that was the best piece of advice that I could have. So I also believe that if someone has helped me and given me certain information, I now in return should pass this off to the next person. So then it keeps going full circle because what those four women did for me in Portugal was mind blowing. And I will forever be grateful for those lessons that they gave me from the confidence boost to the life things that they've taught me. It's just amazing. Like they really opened up my eyes to realize just certain things like when it comes to confidence, when it comes to men, when it just like just eye opening things. Now the next girl that is younger than me that comes along that when I'm 50 and I meet a 30 year old in Portugal in the middle of nowhere, I'm definitely going to pass along that information because I want to be able to help. So there's a big difference between being that type of person to help other people in that for the people who are deserving. And you'll know, you'll oh, know yeah. when you're you good, you can feel it. You'll, you'll know in your gut when someone is, is just eager to learn and they value you versus someone who is eager to take advantage of you. Yep. Got to learn that life. It's, it's just the lessons and, and it's just, it's the progression, everything. But this is, this is all beautiful because you are progressing and you're able to look back and see, man, I fucked up on this, but, but I, I know now and I, and I won't do that shit again. Right. And I think, you know, the best piece of advice that I could also give too is that you just can't be a prisoner of your own past. Got to be able to move forward and just to take life as lessons and take it for a grain of salt and just to learn that like you have the power and the control to just make it better every single day you have the control to hold yourself accountable you have the control to change things about yourself you have the control of everything in in your life for the most part the things that you could do for yourself there's a lot of things that are out of your control and those are things that you have to kind of let go and just like put in god's hands or whatever you believe in the universe x y and z but for the most part universe higher higher being I, I, i say it all to be honest with you i i I, I kind of just lump it all together. God, universe, just anything. When I when I say a prayer or I ask for help or whatnot, I just I kind of just release it and I just say, oh, you gotta give me something. Just give me something. Give me an answer. Give me give me a sign. Just help me move in the way that I'm supposed to move. You know, I've I've been going through, I've been going through some stuff with work lately where I'm phasing clients in out. I'm working with different people now, and um, it's almost like that 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 time period when. I stopped working with Arash and it felt like the biggest shatter. I was like, holy shit, like I'm Arash is like my main guy. Or what am I? He's like the guy that's I'm always with. Like I always thought I'd be his guy, or when I thought I was gonna be Flex Lewis's guy, or this and that. And you know, you have to be able to understand that that was like a chapter. That was a nice little area, but it's not the end of the fucking road. Like, right. Once you phase things out, new opportunities come. It's very crazy how it happens. Yep. It's just things phase in and out of your life consistently. Yep. And, you know, people joke about around all the time. They're like, oh, I'm the main character in my storylines. Okay, okay, it's in play that. Play that. Be that. 
Be the main character in your storyline. Don't just say it as like a, a corny thing that you saw on social media. Actually be it. Right. Because, you know, you write the script. And yeah, life is fucking hard. And there's a lot of things to navigate. Not only finances, but relationships, personal, romantic, yeah. business endeavors. Just existing on a planet with a million other, you know, billions of other people. Yep. It's just a million people in my area, I was going to say. Like a million people right, right in one little area. But um, these are all navigational periods that you have to understand, make moves accordingly, and just... Go with your gut instinct because your gut will never fucking steer you wrong. It's crazy. Right. Every time. Your gut and your body always knows. Like that flight or fight. It just, it knows when things are uh, awry. It's that primal instinct. And it's just, it, it you got to listen to yourself. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Listen to yourself. I mean, you know, kind of to, to, to wrap a little bit, I mean- with my in, with my journey now from the last couple of months, I gave up alcohol in March. I, I told you a little bit earlier when we were on the phone together, I've actually had a bunch of friends message me and say, I'm giving up alcohol too, man. You've inspired me to give up alcohol. Just, and I, I, I don't want anybody to think that I expect that of them because, right. you know, but it's, it's a beautiful thing when I'm sitting here, I'm like, wow, I'm, in, I'm, I'm impacting them that much. Right. I mean, one of my buddies is like, look, I'm drinking non-alcoholic beers. He hit me up yesterday. He's like, you have a lot to do with this, dude. Yeah. He's like, I, I just, I feel clearer already. Like, he's like, I'm not going to say I'm never going to drink again. Which is nice because you always have those handful of people that are like, come on, bro. Like, you're just not going to come out and have a drink. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I hate when people do that shit because yeah, it's I'm like, that, it's bro. a choice. Like, people do that to me all the time. Oh, so you just came out and you're just not going to have a drink? No, I don't enjoy drinking. Just one shot won't kill you. One shot. Okay, that's you, but I don't enjoy these things. Why? Because I want to wake up tomorrow morning. I want to go to the gym. I want to get my da day done. I want to – drinking does not make me feel good. There's no better feeling than when I go out for a few, I hang out, and then I'm like before the drunk – the drunks start really hitting it. I'm, I'm like this. I'm like – Jam jam time. I'm out of here. I don't want to be around any of these motherfuckers. Right. I live ne I live in a village. Yeah. And I live right next to one of the more popular bars in town. I hear these motherfuckers all night. I hear these dumbasses. And I'm just like, yeah, I used to act a little bit like that, but not to the extent that people really act when they're drunk. Right. It is insane. And it's like, I I'm so good on all that. Right. I just want to be, I want to continue trying. And this is what I told my friend. I said, listen, man, when it comes down to it, I'm, I'm experimenting with things. I'm, I've been experimenting with fasting. First of all, my metabolism was through the fucking roof this morning. I couldn't even finish my fast. I was ravenous after my workout. I was like coming up on 14, 15 hours on my fast. And I went, holy shit, I got to eat something. I'm fucking- I love food too much. I'm sorry. I'm dying over it. You know what? I It's weird though. You get- You would really think that I was like on that show, My 600 Pound Life. I mean, you know, you've seen me eat. I'm, I'm gross. Yeah, but you know what? You, you try a fast here and there. It's a very interesting experience, not even for the weight loss, for the health. I just like think of food all the time. Yeah, but you, you can think about it. Just don't eat I it. I just eat. Just eat. don't eat it. <laughs> but my whole, th <laughs> my whole thing is like I want to get rid of vices. I don't want the government to be plugging shit on me and this and that. I want to just get rid of everything. Yep. I don't want to. I mean, this is out probably. Out of the matrix. Yeah, out of the matrix. This is probably like one of my biggest vices, caffeine. Okay, I have it here and there. I'm not slamming down three of these a day anymore. I'll have one every couple of days maybe. I'll have coffee. I drink I drink just like black coffee in the morning here and there. Yeah. But that's another thing. You could just get wrapped up and start drinking five cups a day. I want to just remain. Yeah, and that's what, but that's what happens. Raise your hand if you've ever been personally attacked by Nick Rizzo. <laughs> but you know what? That's better than drinking uh, five five cups of uh, whiskey so uh, right it's I always tell people like we all have our things yeah. I I enjoy coffee and it's not even because it does anything for me I like the taste I love coffee taste yeah but I for some reason Duncan I, girl but for some reason I can't get behind getting a decaf I feel like a cheater I know I just can't do I can't it. get it I can't get it but anyway so it's just it's a matter of I just want to live a really healthy good life I'm at a point in my life especially on the fitness side of things where I'm doing more functional fitness I feel stronger I, I'm leaner yeah feel good like my face isn't fucking fat and swollen anymore I actually have a jaw that's why I shaved my beard yesterday the other day it was getting crazy it like starts to curl up if I don't cut it in time and I just didn't want to go see my barber yet so I was like all right let me just buzz this shit down and I feel good like I got a jawline and shit it just you feel good when you're taking care of yourself yeah absolutely. and even for years I just I, I looked like I was taking care of myself in a lot of ways and I wasn't right so now I'm more more cognizant of needing to be mentally clear, physically clear, and just like, just chilling, doing my podcast, hanging out with Kenji. I'm not working myself to death anymore with the edits yeah. and stuff like that. Listen, I have a lot of great, I have a lot of great clients. I have a lot of clients that know that I would fucking go to the end of the world for them because they've just been supporters of me since day one. And I appreciate them. I fucks with them. I'll do anything for them. And I appreciate that. Uh, anytime somebody hits me up to do a video, I go, Hey, I thank you. 
Yeah. And I go, oh, well, of course. I go, no, no, thank you. Because there's a lot of videographers that you could work with, and I appreciate that you hit me up. Right. That means a lot to me. Right. Because that means that my dog can get his medicine each month, and I can I can continue doing my podcast, which I lose money on every episode I put out because of the time and the the hosting fees and all this stuff. Going to come back though. I appreciate it. I and, know. It, and listen, I know because I've always believed in you. I know and you I know, have. You've always been. A, you've always fucked me. You've always been a supporter. You, you're always. You're. You're always. You're. You were put here to do great things, and I, I'm a firm believer that like when you're a good person and you put good energy out there and when you believe in yourself like things will come back to you in a tenfold when it does you'll never know but you'll look back on all these hard moments and you'll be so grateful I've really had to learn that in this last two three months now I've really had to learn that to just like stick to stick to who I am as a person stick to what I know and I want to have like a peaceful life I want to be mentally strong I want to be physically strong I want to be emotionally strong and I want to be able to have a peaceful life where I'm just confident in all those things because that is going to radiate and it's going to bring multiple success when one door closes, a window, a door, and a garage door is going to open for you. And it's amazing when those things come over in a tenfold. Like, I, I really believe that. But, like, you really got to hold yourself accountable. You really got to put in the growth. You got to put in the work. It's not going to be easy. Like, when you're built and 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 deemed for success, it's not going to be an easy road. And I really believe that. And it's something that you have to do is take the accountability, do the work for yourself, and then it'll come back. But the goal should always be to just have a peaceful life, and I know as soon as I get back to LA, like the number one thing that I'm going to take a big look at is, you know, my role of just work. I, I want to be able to work to live, not live to work because yeah. I am always stressed. I'm always like, and I just feel like I'm always depressed. I feel like, and I just don't want to be that type of person. I want to be this fun, lively It comes person. hand in hand, yeah. An anxiousness and this and that. It just... You know, it's 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 tough. It's but tough. it starts with you. It starts with you. So, like, my best advice to people out there is like, thanks for listening to our episode. Um, is just like awesome. sticking to you and becoming your best higher self. Because if you start falling into a facade of falling in line with other people, and when you start getting caught up in all the extra shit that doesn't matter, you do start to lose yourself. And listen, it's okay. Everyone goes through it. It's okay to lose yourself, but it, what's not okay is to stay in that dark place. I respect people more who can be in a dark place, whether it's for two months, three months, six months, a year, that you pull yourself out. That's what I respect. So when you can pull yourself out, when you can get there, you're always just going to remember those things. Remember who you are. Post the content that you want to post. Stop getting fucking stuck with all these other people because guess what? At the end of the day, you're, you're all you're going to have. You're going to have your tribe. You're going to have the people that you love and respect you. And those people who love you and respect you will never leave your side, no matter how hard it is, no matter what you've gone through. That's what you got to do. Having a bunch of millions of people and millions of followers and friends, that shit is not fulfilling. No matter what these people tell you, it is not fulfilling. So be true to who you are and just stick to that and you'll grow and you'll be successful and just always remember like who you are as a person. Fucking awesome. So now when when can I expect you to um leave uh that shithole? So listen, so I will say <laughs> I will say this. Like I I my long term goal is I would still love to be by coastal because I do. I have a very big attachment to F forty five in downtown. Yeah. I don't ever see myself leaving that place. I love it so much that I want to invest in it. I love the people there. I love that. So I would always have a part of LA when it comes to that. So living there long term. Not happening. But having a piece of LA, I'll always have it because that gym has just changed my life. So I'll I'll never like leave it that. But I do see myself being more so like in in Florida, buying a house there, establishing like my full life there because my parents are moving there, you know. So it's like it, it's a little different. And and that scene has always been my scene. I've always been back and forth between that. So it's coming, but I have just better things coming along. You know, there are a lot of things like I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't accomplish in LA first, but I just gotta I just gotta be a little bit stronger like for myself and like all the things I've been saying or things I'm consciously applying to my life out there because I see past the shit now and I saw a person and a version of myself that I wasn't proud of and I really had to take the accountability for that and just fix it That's the difference between this podcast and the one that we did a couple of years ago is like night and day it's unbelievable You've grown a lot. It's amazing. Thank For you. For real. I'm proud of you. Thank you. That's I awesome. I appreciate that. This was, I mean, this was phenomenal. This was a fucking, a, an excellent episode. I mean, if people don't listen to this, if, if people listen to this and they don't get anything out of this, y'all were, go to the EENT, get those fucking ears checked. Literal. I mean, you know, it, this was like jam-packed with gems. I mean, this was... 
This was like a Dre episode, Dr Gem Central. That's yeah. what this was. No, this this was, and it's funny because like I'm like listening to like us like talking and like what a difference from like that night and day difference because that that when we filmed that. That was like when I just moved out to LA. So my energy was very different. I was yeah. a very different person. And like, I was very like caught up in myself and had a chip on my shoulder thinking like, yeah, I'm in LA now. And like, I'm too cool for school. Like, that was, that was me, you and Panetti, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I know, I know we have those somewhere. We yeah. gotta, I got, we gotta find we that. I want you to watch to that. Yeah. No, I, I definitely It's do. probably crazy. It was crazy. Like I was just like, ah, like all over the place. Like, yeah, my shit doesn't stink. Like I'm in LA now. Like fuck this shit. Like <laughs> now I'm just like. Fuck, Fuck LA. LA. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to probably, at, at the rate that we're going, I'm probably going to have a piece of land in the middle of nowhere, just fucking podcasting and chilling on a farm, just homesteading and growing all my own shit because I don't trust anybody anymore. Do you anymore. follow that Page Wealth on Instagram? I, I might have at one point. Okay. That sound familiar. Well, the Page Wealth just posted like the loneliest house in the world. And it's like this house, literally just a house on a big green island by itself. Oh, and it's a house. Sounds from that sounds amazing. It's just a house. Just give me just give me a dope little gym out there. Uh, get me internet, get me it's gig get me gig internet with Verizon Fios for Fios send the check. Right. And I'll do remote podcasts and I'll fucking chill with Kenji and we'll just live out there and live. I always thought I wanted to be this like famous great trainer. Like right? Like I really moved out to LA like thinking like I want to be famous. Now I don't want to be famous. Yeah. I want to make a difference. Yeah, I, I used to. I used to. I used to believe that I wanted to shoot Hollywood movies, and then I saw what the elites and the Hollywood people actually are, and I said, I don't want any fucking part of that. Holly weird. Yeah, I don't want any fucking part of that. I'm Those so. Those people are fucking weird. I just want to. So I really. I want to. I really want to put that out there. Yeah. Those people and the things that you hear about that shit, it's all true. I know it They're is. They're all weird. Yeah. And I really have been putting a lot of uncomfortable situations out there. And, you know, that's why I view L.A. very differently now because I've been and I've lived it. And I and these are some stories that I've never been comfortable enough to tell people because I've been taken advantage of before. Um, and it's really sad. So you really got to watch. You really have to watch certain things of like who you allow into your life. Wolf and, sheep, wolf and sheep's clothing. I can't say it enough. I've said it like 50 times this episode. And that actually means something. Yeah. Pay attention, people. It is. They're out there and they're more prevalent than you believe. Yeah. They're everywhere. It's one of those scenes that it's not all that it's cracked up to yeah, be. Yeah, I'm good on it. I don't want I don't want any part of it. I want to chill. I want to do my own thing. I want to, you know, grow and have a real following of people that actually fucks with one another and that bring each other up and big each other up and that are there to support each other and help and real following, not right. this fake shit, not right. this bullshit fake that they see me in a Lamborghini and they're just like, oh, Nick is cool. Why? Because I'm in a fucking Lamborghini? Who gives right. a fuck? I don't give a fuck. It's a regular ass guy. I want to I want to get rid of my BMW and get a Forerunner. I want an off-road, rugged Toyota. That's all I want anymore. I never thought I would be like that. I had yeah. the S5. I was like crazy. I, I need this and that. Nope. I know. Wow. It's just called growth, you know? Yeah, it's just different. It's like, different life paths. One thing that I really, like I said, like I why I suggest solo traveling is one lesson that I really learned on this trip that I just came back from was I want to be surrounded with people who are going to feed my soul and not people who are going to feed my ego. And that's how I can end it off. Oh, and how can people get in contact with you, see the real content and uh, check out Miss Lindsay. So it's always been Lindsay Marie Fit on all platforms. It's always going to be Lindsay Marie Fit. So you guys can stay tuned. The next exciting program that I'm working on is an eight-week body recomposition program. So I'll be selling that and working on that as soon as I get back to LA. Recomp is huge. It's huge. That is so People don't big. even know what that means nope. because people just think like weight loss and just bulking and they don't understand the in-between. And body recomposition has become like my big niche and that's how I just lost like all this weight and all these things that I've been doing. Um phenomenal. So thank you. I appreciate you it. Healthy. Um, thank you. Um, so yeah, so that's the new exciting thing that you can uh, come to stay see in a couple of months from now is something uh, that I've been working very hard on for the last two years. I've been working on this program and really trying to, you know, have this niche of mine. So you can definitely see that you can start following my YouTube channel because it's not as big, but I'm getting into the YouTube space and less of like Instagram and TikTok. But you could always find me at lindsaymariefit.com. Beautiful. I appreciate you. I'm glad that we got to catch up while you were in town for real. Appreciate you. It was an amazing episode. You Thank are you. you are the best. And um on that note, everybody, episode 64. I appreciate y'all for fucking with us, hanging out. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned a hundred things because there's a lot of things to learn and absorb. 
And that's the biggest thing. Listen to a little bit here, pause it, go experience life, do your thing. I don't expect people to listen to all these episodes straight through. And if you do, kudos. I appreciate you. We love that. But on that note, I appreciate you guys. Peace.